Um, I feel we're probably going to be one down. Shit happens. Um, it just makes my job that little bit easier tonight. So, um, I do want to run over one small, almost nigh insignificant little thing that I feel you should all be aware of. Uh, potions. A standard health potion, to me, head cannon, that's a fucking test tube. So, mm -hmm. you can... You can spank that as a bonus action, a 2d4 plus 2. Bonus action to spank that and continue. If you're using it on someone else, that's when it becomes an action. And every other potion after that is just straight action. <clears throat> Larger healing potions can be broken down into smaller healing potions. Because the math works out for it really well. You just need to be proficient with alchemist tools. Um, yeah. Alchemist, you say? Not yeah. me. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm the main character of this group. <laughs> I'll tell you if you start acting like that. So, uh, if wait, everyone else is good. Are we, are we not going to wait on little Napoleon? Um, I sent her a message and I've got my phone right here waiting on that message. Um, until then, there is more than half of you here. I am more than good to go. Is the person who's muted here? Or yeah, he's, he's, just, he's just walking home. Okay. So uh, the last thing we need to hear is Chucky Arla! Because he's in okay. Ireland. And it's funny. Up there, uh... <laughs> Making fun of the... my culture. Hey! It's our culture. Fuck <laughs> you! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, noodles just spat over my mouth doing Te that. Technically, oh, it, wait, can, hold on. it can extend to Tom as well if you, if you really want to push these boundaries. I have to fucking regain my sanity. I've been playing Ultra Kill all day. Okay. So, everything's fine. Let's run things. Uh, if you can't hear me at any point, you need me to repeat anything, just ask. Until then. Oh, let's. Let's dive right fucking into it. All right. So, Whoa. big box, so be prepared. <laughs> Welcome to Baldur's Gate. A veritable nest of rats and vipers cling to the rocky slopes overlooking the Chiantian River. From their high perches in the upper city, the local nobles, known as patriarchs, gaze down with veiled contempt upon the common rabble of the grimy lower city, which hugs the foggy harbour. The whole of Baldur's Gate reeks of blood, crime and opportunity. One can easily fathom why pirates and traders are drawn to a place like this, like flies to a carcass. Following the river far east would eventually lead you to Elturel, the capital of the Holy Land, Eltregard. Or at least it was until a few days ago. The flood of refugees from El Terrell has gotten worse since news first arrived that the city had fallen. Everyone is saying Baldur's Gate is next, but no one truly knows who or what has claimed El Terrell. The Patriarchs pay a mercenary group known as the Flaming Fist. Realise I probably should have had my handouts ready for everyone, but you know, that's just how it is. And here we go as I stall just long enough to give you a handout of a nice little image. The Flaming Fist protect the interests of the Patriarchs and Baldur's Gate, and by extension the city itself. The Flaming Fist has gained even more power since their charismatic leader, Alder Ravenguard, claimed the title of Grand Duke. A few years ago. Apparently, Ravenguard is missing. In his absence, the Flaming Fist sealed the city's gates to staunch the flow of refugees. No one is allowed in or out. All of this is brought to your attention as you look through, listening to the crowds, hearing the orders. Some of you's may have been waiting a day, some of you may only just have shown up here in Baldur's Gate to see these stacks of refugees clamoured outside the Basilisk Gate. As you look from atop battlements 
and niches in the walls. You can see crossbows trained on the crowd at any given time. A dirt road stretches through the outer city slums to a bridge known as Worms Crossing and in the distant realms beyond. At this moment in time, you can see dozens of Flaming Fist soldiers trying to control an angry mob of people eager to enter the city. Armed with only a vague description of what's been happening. And through your perceptions, you can see the man that you believe to be in charge of all of this. Running the city's defences. You watch as a surge pushes forth and as it does I will just be quickly dropping all of you into the next scene I will delete that token there I will pop that token there and three two one let me know when we all see it's loaded for me are you seeing yep Oh yeah, music. I can hear it too. <laughs> There's a just, lot going on. So does he look? He just watches. People are pushed in and you hear the sounds from a front. This giant gate. Hush! Keep them back! They must not breach the gates! And with that... Use our three. Um. See, look, there's a mesh, mesh, match of people everywhere. Uh, your tokens are all together, but you did not come here together. I simply mm. dragged these out. <laughs> okay. Oh. Probably somewhere on the trail. Mm, let's see. Oops. Hmm. Well, I guess I'm a man of sheer focus and will. I'm gonna, I guess I'm just going to keep walking forward. Yep. Milling through the crowd. Actually, do I see any people with notable injuries as I'm walking through this crowd? I'm not really injured in that regard. Most of these people have set up camp. And the guards have kind of kept that camp as crime-free as possible. No one's, you know, no one's injured grievously. Maybe a few cuts and scrapes from people tripping on cobblestones. So, the bot in the door, right? Yeah. It's like a... Sort of in car, I suppose, you know, like a choke point, for lack of better terminology. Uh, I'd like to step forward. Well, actually, I'll, I'll stand here. I'll, I'll worry about if I take a step forward, uh, or there are always <laughs> weapons. Uh, but I'd just like to ask, uh, a lot, lad, uh, what's the hold up? Uh. What do you mean, the hold up? The city's closed off. Oh, I need to get in the city, mate. No one in or out of the city. What <laughs> is that? Are you unaware? The city uh... of Elturel has vanished. What, like a magician's trick? I don't believe magicians could do that. But if that's what's going to make you happy, yes. And the magician has caused many refugees to come here. Oh, I get you. And that, looking around. These all seem to be refugees, right? Some are very clearly refugees, some more like travellers. Who are maybe been making, going to make a pit stop in Baldur's Gate. Ah, uh, and that, uh, turn around again. Uh, so, why well, aren't the refugees laid inside? 
Baldur's Gate is over capacity. All oh, right, but only for refugees, all right? For everyone, be you Baldarian or otherwise. Well, um, the reason why I ask is uh, I all uh, all the way up north, you know, uh, you know, uh, Arswin Dale, yeah. Yes. Quite, quite little town. Uh, I was uh, requested to come here uh, for uh, uh, a job at the forge. Uh, give me a deception check. Oh, is it deception? Or persuade, persuade whichever one, really. Um. Whoa. <laughs> Just not notice, mate. Uh, I'm not very good at any. Uh, Don't worry, I'm rolling a flat d20. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> oh dear lord! <laughs> oh, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He places his hand on the pommel of his sword and leans in. Okay. However, you're still not getting in unless you do me a favor. Alright, well, first of all, mate, you got that speech impediment. What's with all the pauses? You can just talk in a normal sentence, yeah? What what favour you want? Stay here. You watch the arms and it moves his hand in a way to have the gates raised just enough. Just he enough does... for me to pass through or what what? He does he walks in, and the gate closes, he's off to the side. At this point, wait, wait. Corby... Wait, what? He just walked into the gate and left me alone? For a moment. Oh, okay, right, sorry mate. Corby. Mm. You stand, yeah. you stand here in a sort of barracked area. Is this man that you know is Captain Zodge. For lack of better terminology, this man looks like Gaston from the animated Beauty and the Beast, but with an eye patch. And they didn't bother to give us a, an image of that, which I think is just criminal, truly. <laughs> but he comes to you. I have a job for you. As someone who wants in to the city and, well, you and him may not be enough. However, I'll give you this. Gives you a little bag with a fair heft amount of coin in it. Go out there, take the man, find some other more capable folk come back and find Tarina at the Elf Song Tavern for me. She has some information. Could you do that for me? Yep, yeah, can do that. Do you want her dead or just where she is? We just need the information and Feel free to act upon it if you will. It may increase your payday. Fair enough. Gark. After a few minutes, you watch as he comes out once more with a hooded figure as the gates arise. He leans back in. Find some friends and be friends with my friend. And I'll let you into the city. And I'll even pay you. Wait, is this the hooded figure? Yes. Oh, okay. Hooded uh, figure, so look a like this. I, I just need a bit of friends with the, the, uh, him. That. Yes, and he'll tell you what to do next. Alright. Hello, mate. Uh, extends my hand. The little figure sort of cocks its head at you and 
puts his hand out to shake uh, your hand. Shake your hand. Ah, I'm over. Oh, Corby. Is is it pronounced with the ticks or is it Corby? <clears throat> can you do it with the ticks? Uh, I, I can I try. Uh, <laughs> Call me. Yeah, that's what most people do. Easier. And it, all, all the time he's talking, his sort of head is sort of like almost twisting, like a like a bird does, just looking at you. All right, mate. Um, tell you what. Uh, as a tick in a friendship, uh, would you like to give me a donation? Hands out. Um, small little page. <laughs> <laughs> is it cleric? I, I, I think if you donate, uh, it would go a long way for us to become friends. And you know what? I'll, I'll give you something in return. What? It's uh, who, uh, who, who am I giving it to? Uh, this is for the uh, the IRA. <laughs> The, the, the international um, red ambitioners. Um, well, ambitioners means for forgery. I can honestly say that that is not something to do with my greater power, she who guides me. I'll tell you um, what, mate, I can see Unfortunately, Oh, not bad. She forbids me from propagating false godhoods, which this is. But I won't hold it against you. What I want you to do, though, is have a look around this motley group out here and see if you can see anyone who looks like they are not completely fucking useless. Uh, what about that dude? Uh, point swords. The heavily armoured one with two swords. <laughs> that's a guard captain, you idiot. Yeah, that seems pretty fucking useful. <laughs> yeah, but he's the one who's paying you to do something. Oh, OK, so it's, it's our, a little game. Yeah, he uh, said, can we find other people amongst these who aren't useless? Oh. Uh, uh, right. See, with a 14 passive perception, you can easily pick out the more useful, shall we say, yeah. of the group. Wait, perhaps pack out the red cut with <laughs> horns? That's <laughs> awfully suspicious. <laughs> All the way in the distance. <laughs> Throughout this entire group of refugees, it's not just humans. There are Tiefling, Felborg, Dragonborn, you know, all manner of different races. The tokens are just human. Uh, I, uh, I want to whisper something to uh, Corey. Uh, right click his name in the bottom and you can actually open up a whisper box. And type oh, it to okay, him. Well, and I will not see it because I'm not a paranoid GM. I uh, feel assaulted. Yeah, hey, uh, quick question. Uh, are these guards dressed as... Are they flaming fists? Every guard or... here is in a full flaming fist attire. Be that some form of plate mail, chain mail, scale mail, or leather mail. Leather mail? Mm. Leather armor. <laughs> well, I can always try... Uh, just gonna scoot on past the strange Beakman. Like, he gives this bird a quiz, Birdman a quizzical look, passes up, and just talks. I want to talk to this guy saying, Uh, excuse me, are they barring entry to the city? Yes, they're barring entry. Um, refugee crisis. Um, things have borrowed out of control recently. And so, due to numerous factors I'm not at liberty to say, uh, the city has been closed to everyone. Well, sounds like the city would need more medical staff on hand. And maybe more muscle. I can provide both. I mean, I was a... What, do, quick question. Do Does, members of the watch have some sort of insignia? They uh, would have? I, I, would, I would say you, you have, you know, your own little badge type then, things. I would like to like 
um, so like flash the badge essentially and say, maybe I can help with this situation, whether it be medical or muscle. As he looks, are you actively serving? Retired, but I can always change that, I suppose. Speak to the captain then. And he points towards uh, one eyed Gaston over here. As you move yeah, past man. the little bird man, the little bird man uh, sort of like whispers to you, hey, hey, mate, do you want to get inside? Yes. I can help you, Captain. There says uh, just a few people can accompany me inside if they're willing to do a little job for him. Just find someone in the city. That would be compensated in any other way? Mm, he hasn't told me how much, but he did suggest that there is some financial recompense if we are successful. Fine then, do you? And you get inside, which at the moment, if whereas most of these lot, they're stuck out here. Shame, but I can do more good inside. Deal. Cool. Uh, 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 call me, uh, back with an update. They, uh, they all look incompetent. Oh, uh, except this guy, of course. Points to the left. Uh, he raises an eyebrow. <laughs> I, I think, at least. Well, you two, I'll be back in a minute. You just introduce yourselves, and I'm going to hop off to the other person who I figure I've got decent enough perception to pick out someone who's interesting. I'll go and talk to this person. I guess I'll hold out a hand to um, Grok's character, which is a bit shaky, but he offers a hand. Yeah, uh, I'll I'm Rupert. Hello, uh, I'm David. Uh-oh. <laughs> Do you even want me to roll? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, w- I want you to roll, because a nat one is a beautiful thing to see. However, a 19 is even better. <laughs> he just... Aha. Uh-huh. You know, David seems like an ill-fitting name. Yeah, thank you, mate. Uh, my parents uh, gave me that name, actually. Uh, matter of fact. It's my, uh, my, 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 um, my pagan name. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, your name is of, whatever you call yourself is of little consequence. Whatever you say, David, as he gives, like, a little air quote with his free hand. As he uh, please, releases please. The handshake. Call me, call me Dave. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, it was nice to meet you. Uh, I'll see you inside. Yes, yes. I'll um, be waiting. Uh, this that, is awkward. <laughs> Cor- Corby approaches <laughs> the uh, the person off to the side. I don't know. Is that Osam or Q's character? Uh, Osam. Yeah. Osam is character. Fine, yeah. Yeah. So you see a small, almost four foot tall, sort of like bird person with a big hooded cloak approach you. You've probably seen him mucking around with two other idiots near the gate, and he could come out with the captain. And he sort of like approaches you, not threateningly, um, and he cocks his head to the side, and you just hear a. Just wondering, mate, um, you interested in getting inside the city? If you are, I could help. Any ideas how to get in? Because from the where I, where I'm standing, it doesn't really look too promising. Down yeah, the sun. <laughs> the guards have shut it down. But you we can, you can get in if you come with me, but you've got to sort of promise to do the captain a, a favour when go, you're inside. Go, go, it's the tiniest quick pause here. Um, is he talking is, to the wrong person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's not talking to you, mate. He's talking to Sam over here. In front yeah, of doesn't help me. Yeah, sorry, mate. <laughs> I just kind of walked up to you. Uh, you started talking to me. I'll, uh, I'll kind of shuffle away. <laughs> Give you a moment. <laughs> um, I sort of, oh, I have like a little like uh, thing in my hand, and I'm just sort of like, it's just like a scribbling into it. Anyway, it's kind of less of a object and more of kind of like tracing fingers like tracing like shapes into my hand as if i'm like writing something down despite there being nothing there kind of like a freak (laughs) and 
I look up and just sort of cock an eyebrow and just stare for a moment before asking. You are telling me I could get the better look at what's inside? Yeah. If you're willing to do the captain there a little favor when we're inside, first thing. Does there pose risk? That's a good question. I don't think so. But it's not beyond the realms of possibility. Things can be dangerous inside. Uh, thieves, bandits, fights, that type of thing. But I don't think the captain is... Well, he is, he is flaming and fist. I don't think he's planning to do anything to us like that. It matters not to me anyways. I'm in. Good to meet you. I'm Corby. Uh, I suppose I'm sort of like a bit of a, like a guide. Um, it, a bunch of... Uh, oh, he's walked off. Do you see the guy by over by the gate? Mm -hmm. If you join him, um, I just got to find one or two more people. And then I think that's enough for the captain and we can head inside. Uh, I didn't catch your name, though. Parasival. Was that Merciful or Percival? Parcival. Parcival. Welcome back, Dave. <laughs> As you leave again. <laughs> and then... I will make... I'll make my way over to the last one. And I approach... Same thing, you see a small little hooded bird-like man approach and he sort of cocks his head and goes, did, uh, did the horn did he tell you anything? Of course. Didn't no, he told me nothing. Why? Just wondering if you're interested in getting inside. I can help, you see. You could help me, I. Captain of the gates, he wants something done inside, but he's caught up here. Can't do what he wants to, all these people here. He's asked me to get some together who would help him go and find someone inside. And who does he want? Is it a bounty or what is it? What is he knocking? Someone called Terina. I think if we to do a good job, there might be money in it. Money? How much? <laughs> I got the impression it depends on how effective we are. Like if, doing what? What are we doing to this poor woman? Well, he told me we didn't have to kill her. Okay. But we had to find well, her. What? Apparently, she knows something. What does she know? If I knew what she knew, he wouldn't need to find her. He could talk to me, right? Well, how could we, how could we retrieve information if we don't know what we're looking for? Good question. Do you want inside or not? <laughs> Here, I'll go off your plan, but as long as there's coin involved, I'll do it. Should be. I'm, my name's Corby. What are you? It's cool, boy. Jack and, Jack and Hagar. Nice to meet you, Corby. Nice to meet you. Um, we've got a few uh, people together. Uh, if we just go over by the gate, and hopefully we can get going and get on with it. Well, that's not waste time. Sweet. Rupert's just fiddling with his yes, gauntlets. I'm just going to quickly grab a drink and a point and a break back. So as we will gather, like, Corby, I think Corby's the smallest because he's he is small size. <laughs> he's not even four <laughs> foot type thing. He just looks up at all of you, like, cocking his head to the side and goes, all right, just a reiteration. We all went inside. We can do that if we do one quick job for a captain. And I nod my head. Find someone. Their name's Terina. They're at a tavern. The elf song. She knows something. Oh. If we do a good job, place. there is some money. I'm Corby. I think I'm being asked to be a guide. And then just sort of like 
introduce yourselves. No, thank you. Well, I'm almost, I'm already familiar with Dave. Uh, uh yeah, okay. holds out two hands, one to the left, one to the right. Hello. Uh, my, my name is, uh, Megan. Oh, I, I did, did you not you say it was Dave earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, who are you? You're Dave. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, mate. Alright, it's just not going to shake my hand, I guess. <laughs> All right. I got it, Chief. Right, uh, Damn, I guess he doesn't get a handshake. So, Gaia will not be joining us this session. Uh, some shit going on. That's perfectly fine. Gets all the awkwardness out the road on that one there. <laughs> As you all approach the gate once more, the captain looks at yourself, Corby. Have you made new friends? Uh, acquaintances, certainly. And remember, Elfsong Tavern, Terena. Feel free to act upon whatever information she gives you. So you watch the looks up once more and it trills his hand up as you hear the creaking of the gates and the chain as it lifts just enough up. On you go now. And before we make our way inside, can I like stand beside him and just kind of say to him, what sort of information are we? Trying to get here. See. Beckons it back down as the gate closes once more. <clears throat> well, Baldur's Gate has long been played with followers of the Dead Three. Don't suppose you know who they are? I'll fill you in. No. Bane, Baal, and Merkel. They were thought wiped out. Turns out they're not. They very much are taking advantage of the situation, killing numerous refugees and people alike, and my employers are not very happy with the damages they are doing. So, as such, give it places a hand on your shoulder, Corby. You are my deputy. He's going to give you that cheeky wink and a smile. Almost almost like a bit of malice in there, like he's mocking you. Cool, he almost squirms, like shifts as if he wanted to be away from the touch and everything, but doesn't quite. Now, if you happen to find any of the Dead Three's followers, by all means, preemptive strikes. By all means. Ah, uh, just no collateral damage. Now, Tarina has some information, gathering rumours for me from the guild. And well, she is a woman of a particular reputation that a man of my reputation cannot be caught with. However, use certainly can. She'll fill you in on the rest. Does that satisfy your need for information? Yeah. Okay. He takes a step back once more and requests the gates be raised as you watch as they start to raise once more the creaking, banging and clanging and the gates open just enough for you to walk through as you do walk into the city i now need to turn two pages in the book right it's been a while it's been a year you enter into the city of Baldur's gate now hopefully there we go 
so we all see the big beautiful map of what is Baldur's Gate. That's where every time I play and DM, I'm always eating. I do apologise. The screen is black. <laughs> that answers my question. No, you can't see. Fire! And I'll still be able to listen. I'm going to go deal with the dog real quick. Yeah, no bar. As you enter into the city from just over here, this is the best. Let's get. Do we have a token on the map? Um. I used to have a little pin that I called You Are Here. I think that's why I don't see anything. Oh no, I've. I guess I'll just. I already put Global Elimination on. Let me try that. You see anything no, there? There we go. Yes. Thank you. Good. This is enter into the city. The place it's quite nice. Some beautiful sandstone buildings in some place. Nice carved stone in the other. Everyone seems to be going about their day as normal, as if there's not a refugee crisis going on just at the other end of that gate. You see numerous small little shops, numerous housings, guards posted at almost every corner, buskers out singing some weird and wonderful songs in some languages that some may understand and some may not. You have the city to yourselves. Where would you like to go? Um, when we're away from the gate and any flaming fists, Corby will just like try and gather the rest of the group around, and he he goes just just to clarify. Despite what the captain said, I'm not a flaming fist. The deputy he said it, it, it it's a joke, but you don't really want to mess with the fist if you're not from Browder's Gate. They can fuck you up, so it's best to sort of do what they want. Um, got you in. I hope you're going to be honest and hang around and help out. Uh, certainly help, and it's good for you not to run foul of them. But I'm not the leader of this shit. If you have any ideas, to, uh, my skills, I know the city, particularly the lower city. I know my way around, so I can guide people. That's why I was sent here. But the captain, he thinks he's funny. I believe the first course of action should probably be to know one another, so should we give everyone our names? Well, apparently that's Dave and Megan. Yeah, great idea. I'm Corby. And you just see a small little uh, Kenku um, with worn but effective sort of grey hooded cloak and armour and he's got like a couple of swords on his belt and a bow over his back. Hmm. Pleasure. I'm Rupert. Rupert Patkin. And he would like, I guess to describe him, he's, uh, he looks human enough, at least. He has some glasses, graying. And his hands, specifically the fingertips that you can see, Almost look like black leather gloves, but are in fact just his fingers. I can handle uh, your medical needs if need be, and I know my way around the watch. My name's uh, Jack and Hagar. Um, my character is basically a bounty hunter type character with a black cloak. Um, just mercenary armor, chainmail, armor in some areas, no armor in others, uh, dark hair, and pretty roughed up from the travel. There's a lot I should have been doing here, and I do apologize. We just had Rupert, and now we are having Jackin. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, but as I said, kind of roughed up from the traveling. Black cloak on the back, but a few holes in it. Weren't her. And a sword. 
Andrea, us, Jacqueline. Sort of bow my head in acknowledgement and just sort of um, look at everybody and give them a once over at every time and just, just sort of just acknowledge everyone's there without saying much before just going, I am farcible. I hope that it would be a pleasure to work with you all, but time will tell. And you just sort of, um, Parsifal is very, he, he, he seems imposing, but really his, his whole demeanor is neither here nor there. It's not very intimidating or it's not very welcoming either. He sort of gives off an energy that is specific to each person, but he has a pretty, uh, he has a, the gait and sort of, um, appearance of someone who seems to be more closed in rather than out and about. He's not, he doesn't have the guise of an adventurer or someone who would be, um, getting their hands dirty, to say. Um, he does have calluses under his, like, knuckles and stuff. You can tell that it's, but it's rather the, um the calluses and sort of marks and bruises of someone who has been riding for a very, very long time. You'll have to tell me where you got your glasses from my, my acquaintance. Pardon? I like your glasses. Maybe you'll uh. give me a recommendation one of these days on glass workers. <laughs> I smile a little bit before just shaking my head perhaps it has been a while since i've had them i could not tell you where i got them from but i appreciate the sentiment nonetheless oh yes and if we need if we ever have need to go to the upper city i know my way around really dark Oh shit, I was muted. <laughs> Hello. Um, I right, thought you were just being uh, very polite, I'll be honest. <laughs> Hello, uh, my name my name is Arby's. Uh, fuck me, mate. I'm here to, uh, <laughs> to create my own god. Your own you god? Wish to what? Uh, no, I don't wish to. Uh, I'm, I'm going to create my own god. You know what a god is, right? Like a deity? I am yes. here. Yeah, I'm gonna make one. How? I am intrigued on the process. And he sort of like leans in closer to you. I am fueled by divine spirits. And I know they tell me in my dreams. And whenever I take a little bit of that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, they tell me that I should go in and create a vessel, imbue it, create a god, and then it's mine. And then I can do whatever I want. With first the god, of, all, of course. First of all, just sort of leans over, like, leans over and stares and looks at him up and down and just doesn't say anything, but just stares in what seems to be slight fascination and also a bit disdain. Hello, mate. Uh, ever heard of personal space, please? God damn. Oh, sorry. Well, it wasn't you who was, uh, like... We were both minutes. leaning in, it seems. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> really feeling like a test specimen, right, eh? First of all, doesn't apologize, but he still relents nonetheless and just goes back to his normal posture, which doesn't seem healthy either, but isn't leaning. Uh, if, you you have need, uh, oh, if you ever need a chiropractor, mate, ah, uh, I can help you, eh? <laughs> I would not trust anybody with your, um... Yeah? <laughs> recommendations of expertise anywhere near my body. Oh, no, it's not a recommendation, mate. <laughs> I just, uh, I just bought you. I just, you know, give them the one, too. I'm very good Pardon? at it. What do you think? Right. I think it's best if you, and he points at or probably talk less than anyone else. I'm very good <laughs> at talking, mate. I'm, I'm, I used to be a missionary, right? For my right. tribe. Just to clarify, <laughs> there's, there's, a difference between, there's a difference between talking a lot and being good at it. 
<laughs> well, apparently I'm fucking mine. <laughs> You're a terrible liar. Rupert, fuck off, mate. Get off my dick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you may not be a missionary, but you are a terrible liar. <laughs> what? Why are you even rolling, mate? You can't get lower than a one. No, uh, actually, you you rolled a two there, my friend. Two negative one. <laughs> By all accounts. Well, it's good to meet you all. Um. I hope we can get this thing done at the tavern quick. More money for everyone then. Well, yes. What is this tavern you. exactly? Oh yeah, right. Uh, follow me, and I'll lead them towards the tavern. Yeah, there's lovely drinks last time I was here, and I'll follow Cole. Cole, Cole, I can't speak. I'll follow Colby. You Colby. forgot the fart noise. Oh yeah, Colby. <laughs> that oh, sounded so moist. So, it's like his first name. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't really sound like you had like shit in your mouth. <laughs> I'll follow Corby. <laughs> Corby. He's licking his lips. <laughs> He's licking his lips. He's tasting it twice. <laughs> you better watch out. It's not your neck. Huh? Oh. Cool. This is the right. energy that I love. So, love you. Uh, you don't take too long to get to the Elsong Tavern. <coughs> uh. <coughs> Fucking race. But, as you approach this rather large building, it's only not even a few blocks away. You just walk straight through the town and just follow the natural curvature of the road and you're there within about 10-15 minutes. Call it 30 for the stopping and staring at the glasses. Pardon me, I'm trying my hardest not to burp. As you look upon this nice building, uh, you look upon this really nice and opulent building, there is the little, <clears throat> little banner on top that seems to just sway of the wind. Elsong Tavern, and you listen in from the outside, it sounds like it is bustling. However, it is the most popular tourist destination in Baldur's Gate. There you go, sorry. <clears throat> I believe that was Rupert who was talking, that I interrupted, and I do apologise, but. Oh no, I didn't realize your, your description wasn't done. My bad. But I was just going to say to Corby, by the way, do you know what this person we're looking for well, looks like? Nope. Ah. Well. All I got is a name. Oh, well, we can just shake that. That's easy. <laughs> Um, how? That's how I spent spelt it. DM. I don't know. Uh, close. Oh, there you go. How about we use? How about we use that method as a last resort, David Megan? Oh, uh, you forgot uh, Arby, Arby's. Da <laughs> David Megan Arby's. Uh, how about we do that as a last resort? Maybe we should be a bit more subtle. Sort of right, lean into mate. the conversation from behind, and I just look between them and go, Do you know what occupation she would have here? Or her business in being in a place such as this? It looks highly populated, but typically well, when you come to someone for information, they have a bit of a thing up their sleeve, and they've seen a thing, or know a thing or two. She's not right to be a noble, from what the captain said. <laughs> hmm. Maybe someone of criminal sort? Or at least, not all, all for the law. It's 
Is the bar like visible or accessible from here? Uh, you there. stand outside the front door. Okay. When to get ID? Bouncer standing there. Uh, race and age, please. Got me feel the right <laughs> drinking age for your race. Oh uh, shit. Rupert. Uh, oh sorry, you said race. Uh, sorry, human. Forty. There, you're good. Go in. <laughs> Pushes the uh, door. Next. Uh, hello, mate. Hello. Uh, my, I'm, um, I'm Zoe. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, here's my ID. Um, if you want to, you can uh, make a donation. Yeah, places his arm out in front. No, Zoe. You are not. Real name and age. Oh, age as well. Uh, would you believe me if I told you that I didn't know my name, uh, my age? I do know my name. I think. No, I would not believe you. Well, fuck. Um, <laughs> give me a moment, mate. I Please am, step out to the side. I am three hundred and fifty-two years old. Can you believe it, mate? I think that's all enough for a drink. Roll the appropriate check. You probably check. didn't say something that I just fucking... <laughs> I'm rolling flat d20s here. <laughs> to believe me. <laughs> Given he caught you out on the name? Oh, fair enough. Well, what's the roll? Does he believe my age? Uh, I don't know, but did you see your character's age actually was? I don't, I don't fucking know. See, you did are... I... Mm. I think that is actually a believable age for your race. Oh, hell yeah. Let's go. We're going to find out later that he's like an amnesia coma patient. He's just trying to like make guesses. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. That's a good one. Page 35. Furiously whips out the book. Good time, mate. God damn, brother. Hmm. I say, as yeah, this giant fucking ogre is taking out a little journal, flipping through it. <laughs> Just the book of age and race. Yeah, look at what the legal drinking age is for a gnome. Every time he makes it, like, a lie, I just imagine him, like, looking over his shoulder and, like, smiling and being like, oh my god, they're gonna buy it. Yeah, thumbs yeah, up, that's a roll of one. <laughs> Rupert in the corner just shaking his head no. <laughs> and your name, once more. What? I couldn't hear that. And your name once more. Ahem. Uh. 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 That's my name. <laughs> uh, thank you, mate. I I'm going to have to. This means I'm permitted into this establishment. I'm going to have to ask you to stand to the side. I've just okay. became meant. No, not outside. Here. Out side. As you watch as the armor just places its hands on your shoulder. Oh, fuck me. Alright. Uh, Alright, mate. Uh, just let me know when I can come in. I'll, uh, I'll, wait. I'll look through the window. Every now and then I'll knock. <laughs> There's always one. Can you get your story straight before you. I, I told him my name and age. I don't know what else he wants. Let's go. Looks. Cor uh. Corby. It's been a while, friend. Here you come. Yeah. Um, that idiot back there, <clears throat> he's not sure of his name. He doesn't know it. Doesn't seem sure of much. No, he's not. We're not sure he's all there. I put like tap at his head. I think he's trying out names. Does you he... couldn't just overlook it just this once, could you? If he's a problem, just beat him up. Do I hear that? <laughs> Do I hear that all the way from here? He's technically inside, so the roar of the inside. Oh, it's okay. a bit hard. I'd, I'd ask you I'd ask you to roll against it. No, I'm, I'm good then. <laughs> oh, because you rolled so poor. <laughs> no, I'm not, not going to roll for that. <laughs> we'll see with the rest of your friend. In you go for now. Appreciate Next. My thing. Help! Help! Okay, it's fine. 
Are you okay, sir? Sorry. Out of character. I find my interface was broken. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> do I step... Does, do I put my token outside or inside the door? Does it outside? Either or. <laughs> okay. Who sort of like walks up to the front and just peeks inside? Let's see, giant half ogre stanza. Nemenage. Barasarvol, 35. Looks up and down. Book. Tiefling. Tiefling. You're good. Next! Kraken, human, Ponte. Yeah. The easiest. In you come! As he bellows outside. You very much, you very much hear that one as he is actively leaning out the door shouting. Wait till me. Hey. Yes. Hey, Scottish. Oh, fuck! Um. <laughs> As you, I will say, in your little detour that you've been taking looking around, you have been able to see through some windows. The first room that you looked in there. Oh, yeah, it was just glaring. But very smoky in that room. Oh. You couldn't quite see much. But you could tell that there were people in there. That's probably the, the smokers area, for lack of better terminology. Uh, they don't like those people mingling with the rest of the common folk. As you looked over through the other window, However, you did see just a solemn woman drinking on her own. Hello, mate. Uh, oh, what? Uh, 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 yeah. Cause no trouble. Use. Uh, yeah. Enter. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, just looking at this, is, is there something off about this person right here? <laughs> or... Um, that there is the token or an acolyte. Would I recognize what they're an acolyte of? Because I'm like looking around the bar for less than... Like, I'm give, given my history as a watch... Yeah. Man. Yeah, I'd say you're... I'm looking for less scrupulous... Re, less scrupulous... Let... Yeah. I can't say the I'd, word. Scrupulous. I'd say as you take a look at this particular person, you can tell that they are an acolyte of... Leave this god has a temple in the city, but you know that way you just want to double check to be safe. Um... Dun 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 dun... Helm. Hell no, that guy. Uh, then, I'll take a mental note of that. Do I see any, like, less than scrupulous, scrupulous folk around? More people who would be more under the table? You came in with them. <laughs> Besides the bird. You do see a few people... Guards and such, definitely people who should be at work, but they aren't. Even a few Flaming Fist members. But for the most part, it's hard to say exactly is one of the most popular destinations in the gate. Fair enough. Yeah, I think I'll just head up straight to the tender and ask, excuse me, uh, Ooh, hello, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. I have a question for you. Do you know anyone by the name of uh, Karina? Let's see. Watch. His face drops instantly. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yep. And what would you have with her? Just need to ask a few questions. That's what they all say. It's it's hard to believe, given the company she keeps. Hmm. 
Well, is there anything I could do to earn your trust, I suppose? Well, when a stranger walks into your place of business and starts asking questions with no authority, we're not really inclined to answer questions. Oh, you say authority. Authority, you say. Uh, I'll just do a subtle flick of the badge. Oh. You're a bit far from home. She tends to spend more of her time upstairs, shall we say. Out of sight, out of mind. All right. Well then, my good man, uh, here, for your troubles, uh, why don't you just, uh, uh, hold on, I need to remember how much, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to purchase a drink and then head up. Out of, uh, you know, a bit of respect. Call it two silver. Uh, what did you say? Two silver. Two silver, that works. Yeah, Rupert props up two silver for a drink and says, All right, I won't cause it, I will. I won't cause any trouble. It's not you I'm worried about. Ah, good to know. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to whisper to, uh, what, what, I'm sorry, what is your character's name again? Q. Q. No, uh, that's, that's the player. I'm sh prompting. Ah. Q, your character's name. Hello. Oh, you yeah, said This character's name is, um, Jacken. Ah. I'm Jacken. Uh, those are businesses due upstairs. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go inform Corby. Because he walks up with his drink. I'm gonna peer into, ah. like, this secluded room that I'm next to. It's sort of off to the side. Yep. As you look, the door is closed, but even getting close to that door, you can smell all manner of tobaccos. Be that of the sort of musky sweet kind and some of that stronger, thicker, and even some of that dank dank, you know? Some of that good mm. stuff. All, all manner of things being smoked in that room that you can tell. As there are even just little whiffs of smoke coming from just under the door every once in a while. The conversation that you can make out. It's very much pompous. There's nothing... It doesn't sound like anything of substance either. These people in here seem to all be... Trying to one up each other with very small incremental whys to make them seem more grand than they actually are. Can I check if the door is locked? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Take a little walk on over. Oh wait, you mean this room? Yeah. Oh, there's no door on this room. This is just a small okay. cubby. But I thought you meant the it's door right. you were standing right next to. No, but I, I am actually kind of intrigued by that one, now that you mentioned that. <laughs> well, since you look in there, you do see that she is... You see a halfling druid wearing a nice colourful cape, writing down in a little book, which seems to be alchemical reaction. Certain things mixed to certain things to give effects. Alright. Um, actually, now that you mentioned the other room, I'm kind of interested in that. Now I'm actually going to check yeah. if that one's locked. It's going to walk up and place your hand on the door. You can see that it 
isn't fully closed. It is, it's not open ajar, but you can tell they haven't exactly had that click to the mechanism of the door. Alright, I'll just walk in. Just click the door. As you do, you see <clears throat> all manner of men standing there with pipes and rudimentary cigars. Oh, I say, this is someone new indeed, indeed. Tell me, what is your name? I am possible. I was simply passing through and I was hoping to gain just a bit of knowledge on anyone around this area. I was hoping that maybe you could tell me about yourselves. Oh, well, there's not much to tell. I am a... <clears throat> I own some land just up in the north there. Ah, northern end of the city, of course. Oh, no one wants to own land north of Waterdeep, obvious reasons. But I have some land up there, and it's very, uh, it's very nice. He, he doesn't own much, not at all. He's, he's posturing. He owns nothing more than a hovel and callishim. Mm. You know, watch as the small little arguments seem to be breaking out as lies seem to be deteriorating. This ash from pipes and cigars seem to muddy the room. It almost looks thick with soot and dust. Mm, well, I've heard from other people in this community that there's a sort of uprising how do I put it? Rather criminal behavior from notable figures in this city. I take it you tend to buy land separate from there, no? Maybe we buy it whatever it's going. If there's a spare house, then we buy. Why not? Anything to make a few extra gold? As for who's selling it? We don't ask questions. I see. Does that ever pose problems for you? Yes, well, one time I found a body in the living room, but it turned out to be just a dead squatter. Barring that, nothing. Interesting. Tell Did me of the rumours you've heard. Please. I've simply heard the mm, names coming and going. I'm not necessarily a stay-in-one-place sort of person. I've gained the name of some sort of rogue people in the area. I was hoping that you could tell me about who to avoid. I mean, people like you seem to know what you're talking about, and I myself am just a feeble scholar, and I was hoping that... Perhaps you could give me the sights on what to avoid. Oh. I'll tell you what. There's one person you want to avoid. On your way in here, how did you come in? What gate? Or did you come back? What gate did we, what gate did we come in through? Basilisk. Okay. We came in through the Basilisk gate. Ah, then you, you passed Eastway Expeditions. Dango. He's a robin bastard him. He's what he does, right? Mm. Right? He waits for everybody who's gone to chop. He waits till they go and come back with half the men they had. And then he buys all their used gear. A heavy discount because family's mourning, and then he sells it back quadruple the price in robbery. Interesting, it simply piques my interest because you had mentioned it before. Did you not say that you would buy property from anyone who offered it? Does that not make you any different? Property isn't building. 
It does not matter all the same, does it not? There's a bit of a difference. We're not war profiteering. Hmm. Interesting. I suppose I would have to look into it then. Do you know of any dangerous individuals that frequent this tavern? Hmm. Oh, there's... There's Tarina upstairs, but... She's harmless if you ignore her. Ignore her? For what reason would you need to do that? To avoid the trouble she brings. Which would be... She's a criminal. Thievery. I think she's in murder. I heard she was in line with Merkel a lot. Merkel? God of the Dead Three. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I appreciate all the insight. I will be sure to return if I have any more questions or... Uh, investments in your property. It appears I still have much to learn, as it put. Uh, be I bid you farewell. Happy to share when we're not inebriated. Enjoy the rest of your day. Percival, was it? Percival. That was close enough. You watch as they all get back to it and hushed tones and drinking away, smoking away. You hear the barking of tinder boxes as some pipes need relit. Oops. There you go. That's not what I, I just moved you straight there through you the door like it was never there. What's the rest of us doing? Gar Here, go on, me. Take, take this drink. I don't want it. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. That's right. You were talking. Um, before Rupert came up when he was at the bar, mm -hmm. I was just doing um, old, old, old habits die hard, and I was just sort of like casing the joint. Is there any obvious someone wearing like lots of jewelry, looking <laughs> really rich, stuff like that? Uh, Give me a quick sec. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, dun. Silver jewel. There is. So I will say, there is one person, and I'm a high. Yep, 110%. I didn't put their token down. So let's just say that you clocked someone over here. Um. Let's see. Well, technically, here, yeah. So, in the top uh, northwestern corner, you see a halfling. Since we're looking at shinies, for lack of a better term, you're going to see a halfling yeah. with a little sack of money constantly twirling a coin between their fingers, that like poker players do with a single chip. You're going to see them doing that whilst counting some money. And technically speaking, that accolade is absolutely dripping in holy symbol. Oh. Okay. Good to know. I'll keep these marks here just in case. Yeah. And I'll snap out of it and I start looking around, trying to, trying to keep an eye on the rest of <laughs> the group. So, so you take a look around as Rupert comes and hands you the drink and places it in your hand as you're... Huh? <laughs> You watch as he walks on over to where Aura has been sitting there the whole time, just by the fire, getting comfortable on the chairs. Percival walks out of a room as you watch the billow of smoke just seems to pass on through the room. Some of the people sitting at the table start coughing away at it for a moment before drawing him a dirty look. And Jack has just been standing there patiently. I offer the drink to Jack and... Do you want this? I'm holding it up to him. Yeah. 
Here we get it. So this happens every game. Without fail, there's someone muted that someone talks to. We have to remind them they're muted. <laughs> every game. Sure, I'll take it. I'll just pass it on. There's something I would like to do, actually. Yeah, of course. Can I, uh, can I investigate that fashionable suit of armor that tried to uh, choke me? Yeah, of course. That assaulted me. I'll just, uh, zoop. Uh, really don't know what to do. Uh, first of all, uh, big dude, can I, uh, can I take a look see at, at, at the army? Yes, you can take a look. There is oh, yeah. nothing to stop you. Um, he may have objections, but he can speak for himself. It's a fucking hour. Um, are you fucking... Well, the point is to see uh, if I can figure out what made it move on its own. Well, I'll give you, I'll give you both of these rolls. Your investigation... Wait, I'm assuming... Sorry, I'm assuming it's empty, or is there someone inside? Oh, your eight lets you know that yes, that is empty for the most part. Okay, okay. That's okay. as, as about as much as it really gives you. Um, but you can tell that there is some, some arcane power behind this that is causing it to move of its own volition, kind of do its own thing, but as it stands there right now, it is almost indistinguishable from just a standard display suit of armour. Fashionable. Scrub my beard. Uh, you, big slob of butter. Where do you, you want to tell me where you got that? This is not my establishment. Oh, so you might know where you got it. It was constructed. Yeah, where? <laughs> if you don't know, can you point me in the direction of someone who does? Alan may know. He points towards the bar. Who? What? Oh, bar. Alright, thank you, mate. Um, care for a donation? It's for a good cause. I don't keep money on me. Alright, tough crowd. Every cleric. Every cleric. <laughs> what do you mean every cleric? <laughs> <laughs> Mad Mage, Dragonlance, the previous descent into Avernus. Every cleric pulls out the arms box and asks someone for a donation. Look, I need it, alright? I have... Uh, Needs. Good cause. <laughs> Uh, hello. I'd like to make an order, please. Yes, how can I help? Uh, I'd like one gold piece. If I could, please. It's gonna look. Sir, you're in a tavern. You pay me. Oh, right, alright, that's how this works. Um, what if I pay you one gold piece, and then you tell me where you got that lovely suit of, uh, armor from? When, like a doll, that. Like, uh, Turks people eight. No. Oh. Of course. What do you mean, though? No? I said, oh. Well, that is clank. And I you had... seriously named the piece of steel clank. That's the name it came with. And I oh, got right. him from someone in the upper city. Are you gonna give me a name as well? Yes, uh There we go. The Lama Bantham. Sorry mate. Yeah. So cool. huh? I will rate it in for you. Yeah, I heard salami as well. Lamy Van Thump, you will not believe he deals in sussy. <laughs> That's your cousin. <laughs> Alright, thank you, mate. Um, about that gold piece, um, I, I think I'll be keeping it. Thank you very much. Oh, actually, I have a drink. Can I return it? Uh, I, I, I didn't want it in the end. Can I get my money back? 
You didn't. You didn't order a drink. Well, I have a drink right here, mate. It's from your establishment. I, I don't want it in the end. Can I have my money back? You should. Are you fucking. You didn't order a drink from me. Oh, you must have forgot. No, I'm pretty sure you didn't. Alright. <laughs> Keep your filthy drink, smartass. Uh, slums it down on the counter. Sorry, Bibs. <laughs> Alright, I sit solemnly by the fire next to my buddy Rupert. Oh no, that's not Rupert anymore. Never mind. <laughs> you think it's Rupert. Can't listen. The skies can't. <laughs> It's Rupert's um, twin brother. Oh shit, wait, hold on, sorry, maybe I should join Ronnie. Uh, hello. Sorry, I had a, a a business opportunity. Oh god, you smell like cigars. I unfortunately had to make acquaintances with many people who were far from sober. Well, I got good news. Um, uh, I think I found our... Uh, Person of interest should be right up the stairs. <clears throat> ah, so the information I was given was not entirely useless. Mm. Seems not. <laughs> oh god. Sorry, I'm just going to step away a second. Don't get into smoking, it's terrible for your lungs. <laughs> I can tell you that one from experience. <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. Unless they're free. Maybe. <laughs> or unless Rupert prescribes you them. Ah, <laughs> oh, we're going to hell. <clears throat> uh, well. Good news. She seems to be up this. They seem to be up the stairs. Bad news. Everyone seems to be slightly concerned about them. Oh, what is that? Maybe she's ill. Hi. Oh, I can fix that. I think it's more of a safety concern. Oh. Uh, uh. Well. I can fix that? <laughs> just be on your guard, okay? I don't want to have to repair any broken bones. I just got back home. Wait, what kind of illness are we talking about? <laughs> Uh, what illness causes broken bones? That one that Samuel L. Jackson had in class. Yeah, <laughs> but then she breaks. Oh, he's talking about. All right, I thought he was talking about curing my broken bones. I get it. I get it. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Whoa. All right. Boop. I, I I just had a flashback. Boop. I think I just saw God. Boop. <laughs> yeah. Why does he look like me? Welcome to my life. Is it actually showing you shit as it teleports you? Yes. It, it just did a flash of white as like a thing to transition. You didn't even change scene. That's the funny part. Oh. You just, just moved all the way to the right. I just moved up the <laughs> stairs and now we're up here. Yeah. The, the map is just one and one. You just moved to the right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Enter. Oh, I just look to the left. <laughs> this is enter into this area. An upper area. You see a table. And this table you see... Oh, you see two tables, rather. Yeah. <clears throat> On one table, a group of men just solemnly drinking. And on the other, you see a more rough group. As they all sit there with cards in hand. You see a small pile of money on the table. <clears throat> As it does, they place down their cards. As a wee female smirks, leans in and grabs the money. There's mine then. Wait! She watches the man here just storms off. It's the woman laughs. I'm not going to move his fucking token, that's way too much work. 
well, I already smacked the table. Uh, do we know where the, the, the sick one is? She, she's not sick. Yeah. Oh, no, shit. don't know. We just know oh. she's up here. Alright. Uh, knock on the door. As you knock upon this door. Give it a minute. I am giving it a minute. No response. <coughs> uh, I'd like to uh, knock on this door a little harder. So you bang upon the door like an aggressive oh, I salesman. <laughs> I didn't say bang. I said a little louder. <laughs> Maybe she's deaf, you know? Maybe that's the illness. <laughs> Alright. Is this a tavern? Does, is, does Tavern the one that has like rooms to sleep in, or is that yeah, anything? very much so. Most of these rooms do seem to, you're given by the space of the doors. Most of these do seem to be temporary lodgings. And uh, the people sitting at the tables. Is there only one woman or two, two, three? How many women are there? There's only one woman at the head of a table. Like to politely knock on the door if no one else wants to talk to anyone. <laughs> no, so you knock on that door. I've got the exact numbers for you, so just in case. So you knock upon the door. One of the elder gentlemen leans back. That there's also empty. All right. Uh, thank you, miss. If you'd like to look at the two tables, mm -hmm. does it seem that uh, one of them is playing cards, weren't they? Does it yeah. seem like there are a group? You know how, like, when you, sometimes when you play cards, there's partners. They might not be official partners, but does it look like some of the people know each other? Or are they looking out for each other? Is that possible to tell? You can tell that there's a familiarity at the table between the okay. people, but they don't seem to be. In that friendly, you know, if someone jumps you, I'll jump in type, you know. Just seem to have played for a long period of time together. Similar query. Uh, do any do the people at the playing cards look like they're of the uh, rough and tumble sort, like, specifically, like, because if I remember correctly, Tarina's a bit of a... All of uh, them. All of them. They, they all, all look... They all look like if you were walking down an alleyway and they were walking towards you, you'd run the opposite direction. Mm. Rupert is going to take the calculated choice to wait to uh, to get someone to back him up <laughs> before he starts asking questions. Can I see what game they're playing? Um, so the book gives it a name, okay, and it also tells you how to play said game. Um. It says here they're playing Baldur's Bones. For the safety of everything that's going on, let's play their. Let's say they're playing Waterdeep Hold'em. All right. Gark, you look upon another door, another door similar to all the two other doors that you've looked at so far. I like to politely knock. Is you? knock upon the door it does actually seem to just open well that's a first knocking on a door or opening it usually you do the handle uh yeah i'm not going in there really <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll look at, i'll look at the the feathered one and just kind of you know pop behind me don't really want to say anything to stay sneaky Oh, he nods at you, and then we'll sort of look around and then slowly approach the table, uh, clears his throat and goes, um, <coughs> uh, we're looking for Tarina. And what business would you have with her? I, I will use this. Oh. Okay. And perfectly mimic Captain Zodge saying, Corby, you're my wink. 
Deputy. Audible He's wink. wink. <laughs> Audible wink. <laughs> All right. And, and then go back to my normal voice and say, he sent me to us to talk to you. He said you might have some information. Do you watch as she takes the deck of cards and ruffles it together and places it? On you, go. I'm going to point to the two people sitting there. He's going to nod and make himself scarce over here. Take a seat. And what does Zodge want from me? Uh, Jagan makes his way over beside these people and says, listen, let's just save time here. He wants to know about the the on the rumors that you might have heard around in this area about the undead. We just want to know what you know. Undead? You mean the dead three? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, in that case, you should be aware that what you are getting yourself into will be dangerous. Cultists killing and numerous other strange dealings going on, but if that's what you wish, they have a base of operations here Where? in the city. It's just an, at this moment, as she starts, you hear a song, a weird song, as there's been no juke uh, no joke box, fuck me. And an extra thousand years. <laughs> There's been no bard, no music or such. However, show of hands. Anyone here speak Elvish? I do. I do. Is user listening in on this? The sound of a song sang in Elvish seems to. Amen. Do I? I might not actually. Maybe I'm a liar. Wait. Probably a better one than Garth. Oh, yeah. Sorry? She said maybe she's a liar. No, man. Is there a bard here tonight? I didn't see one. Watch as everyone. He's sort of like looking around. Sorry, good. This is everyone kind of stops and looks as well and. You can tell that many people in the room don't understand what is being said. But this one looks. Ah, oh, there is never a bard. What's going on? Can uh, yeah. As as Aurora hears, you know something that sounds absolutely out of the fucking world in a language he can't hear, uh, very alien. Can he try and, and stealthily cast um, a spell? Yeah, what are you thinking? Uh, detect magic, which is um, yeah, global and somatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could even ritual cast that if you feel like it. Well, yeah, but yeah. That would, that's oh, yeah. 10 minutes. Did you cast the spell. What are you trying to detect here? Uh, just a safeguard, really. Um, for right now, because currently he's he's on edge, because he hears something that's alien. Hmm? Um, so something might happen. Yeah, no. As a, as a part of it, I don't know how useful this would be right now, but can I cast something too? Of course. Uh, divine senses, just to see. Of course. Anything spooky? Both just pop them. I, 
I know what they were singing. It was, they were singing. It was. It's a tune about elder. It was. It's in elvish. <laughs> so this is where this is where the fun of this map works out. Um, let's see. Uh, duration, magic sense, action, pain, aura, object, bears, blah. So it is one foot of stone or one inch of common metal. Good news. Um, yeah. You sense undead directly below you. Like, if you fell through the floor, ghost. Mm. Or zombie. Oh. Ooh. Can I uh, can I slide a piece of paper across the table to Colby? Yeah. I tell um, the group what I sense, by the way. I tell you guys. You guys, I sense on there below us. Something. Oh, okay. Fun one. Oh, Gark, you... Technically... Technically, you sense necromancy. Magic is magic. Well, it's, uh, someone already publicly said it, so no use in keeping it uh, hidden. Ah. So, uh, never mind the note. So, Jack and senses necromancy? No. Or, 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 or senses necromancy, you specifically sense an undead. Is that yes, what you're... Okay. I don't know if it's smell or such, because I realised that was detect magic to find sense. Uh, within 60 foot, yeah. Um, so, you feel an undead within 60 foot, yeah. Directly below you. And I tell the group that, guys, I sense undead below us, directly below us. The, I will say the song keeps playing. I won't continue playing it, but the song itself keeps singing. I move closer to the table in a sense that would probably be seen as looming or sort of maybe even creepy, but I don't seem to make any sudden moves, I'm just standing and listening nearby. Is there any commotion from downstairs? There is... tavern clamor? There is the clamor, but downstairs is considerably quieter. There's no screaming, doesn't seem like there's any commotion, but everything that was going on down there just seems to have ceased. Is there song coming from up here? No, it's below. No, below. Songs below. Yeah. Is, 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 is the girl, what's the girl's name? Veronica, is it? Tarina. Tarina, sorry. Tarina hasn't um, finished telling us where it is, has she? No. She too was interrupted by the song. Tarina, she... where yes. is it? The. The nice. It's in the upper end of the city. And it's drawn a table. Several blocks northwest is a bathhouse. The dead three have been seen coming and going from there. The bathhouse in the upper city. Do okay. I know any bathhouses in the upper city? By name. You know a few, yeah. Um, name wise, the book only really gives one, however. But there are a few. She kind uh, of looks. Will Green and name the bathhouse? It's not a name that I know, but it's walled off. It has frolicking nymphs carved into its front gates. You can't miss it. Okay. I know where most of the bathhouses are in the upper city. I could probably guide you. But well, has has anything changed? But is it still acting like a bathhouse, or has anything changed? Very Since... much still a bathhouse by day. By night, it's its own cabal. Can I like kind of sneak down the stairs and have a peek of what's going on? Of course. Is she telling us everything, or is she leaving anything out, anything like that? Hi! So, we interrupt this very particular game of Descent into Varnus, Session 1, hoping you're enjoying it. Just to say, this is technically an ad break. It's going to be seconds long, it's a good place to pause if you need to go ahead and get yourself a drink. Like, say, some Pepsi, like her boy, Pepsi. Or a Coke if you are feeling absolutely vanilla. 
um, so 2024 hope you had a good year and hopefully you enjoy what's coming uh, there will be more announcements soon until then uh, back to you DM Matthew it doesn't seem like she's leaving anything out no she seems a bit shaken with it as well we'll say uh, for yourself there Q as you you know get up and start to head down the stairs and as you do go down you slowly see through the banister a spectral figure standing at the bottom sitting at the bottom of the stairs in a little archway curve as it seems to sing its song once more before you know as you get just to the very bottom and curiosity peeking the front door gets essentially kicked in as you hear the huge bang you watch as eight monthly humans saunter in the leader is brawny man with a cloudy eye this almost disgustingly cruel sneer and a pirate swagger with him come five other men almost similar as he does walks in we're looking for an old friend of ours don't suppose anyone's seen her I've got 200 gold for anyone who's seen the cheating lying bitch Tarina you watch as he drops a bag of gold on the floor you watch as it spells out it's very much full I walk over to him I walk, I, I walk over to his face and say 400 Looks you dead in the eye. It's milky eye. It's like, what? What? Yep. She knows I'm running the fucking game. Give me a sec. I gotta quickly grab something. We pause that milky white eye. The milky white eyes. I wonder if they taste like milky way bars. Like you have chance to meatballs? Jesus Christ. Jesus. That opened up uh, a memory. You saying that? Milky Way bars? I haven't yeah. heard, That's... seen, or tasted that in so fucking long. Marcel's such a oh. freak. He's like has no social awareness whatsoever. <laughs> he's just like looming over this table, but like he's not even like doing it to be weird. He's just like, hey guys, how's it going? Yep, Milky like, Bar like, bars. Hello, like, hello kids. Milky bar buttons is all I'm gonna say. Is he? he does that a lot. He just kind of like looms over people, but he does—he's not—he's not even doing it to be like intimidating. He's just doing it for convenience, whatever he deems is convenient for whatever reason. Bro, he's out. so fucking mean to me. So cute, I'll move you down as he looks in. Two hundred, and whatever she's got on her. She's a lying, cheap About bitch. Three hundred, and you keep and you keep us on her. I'm just looking to settle a score, and I'm just looking three hundred. It's two hundred, battle. Royale. First one to get her. Price non negotiable. He pulls scimitar up and places the pointed end under your chin. Would you like to be taken out of the runnings? 200. She's upstairs. Thank you. See. That went very easy. <laughs> See, makes his way 
upstairs. But he, he, he's not out any more money. What are you talking about? It was the worst persuasion in the world. As he walks, everyone upstairs being told of this place hears the of his footsteps coming up. As it does, you hear, well, well, he wasn't lying. It's Tarina. Licks, <laughs> grabs you by the shoulder there, Percival. That, mm. that I'm definitely 100% saying your name, Percival. Percival, grabs you by the shoulder. If you want any more information, you will fucking kill him right now. Fine, brother. See, starts walking up the stairs. As members. Of his crew start walking up. One of them sits down next to yourself, Rupert. Hello. Oh, you needed something. I thought that text was for the toilet paper. Ah. Oh. Sorry. What are we doing? I'm just going to whisper to Corby real quick since he seems the most equipped for this. So, what's the game plan? You seem familiar with this rough and tumble kind of business. Do these people have any mark, signs, indication of who they are? Um, as you take a look, they are very obviously pirates. Seafaring men for certain. Uh, I'm not gonna, say, not gonna say like your stereotypical pilot peg peg leg and a pirate pa type deal, but you know, you can tell. Wait, what did he give me the payment? Two hundred gold in a bag he is sitting on the floor at and your feet. I, I, I pick it up. Yep. Uh so add two hundred gold to your sheet. Uh, so I know you're yeah. in D&D &D Beyond, but I'll also throw it on your sheet here just now. No problem. Here we go. Uh, I don't know I like, name is, by the way. Yeah. I like kind of nosy back up to see what's going on. Yeah. I'll put you back on the stairs. Uh, just kind of behind them, I'd say. You're probably about maybe, I want to say 30 feet behind the guy. Yeah, exactly 30 feet behind the guy. Um, Gark, you look, you listen to her, the crackles in her voice, a bathhouse with nymphs carved into the side, seems a broad enough description that, yeah, you know, she probably doesn't have much else that she could actually really give you. She's expendable at this point, if you were to look at it through the right. lens of an asshole. He goes, hey, hello, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> but uh, there goes my plan then. Quick question. Um, am I able to like size up the threat, like how big of a threat these bandits might be? Yeah, uh, roll an insight. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, 16. Very much. Very much a fight. Like, it would it would drag out a bit if you were to get into a fight. Yeah. But you could take them. Oh. You just um, wouldn't. I'd say you could take them, but you wouldn't exactly get away unscathed. It'll hurt. Yeah. Like, so someone's going to A and E with a broken rib. And someone's nose is no. Someone's nose is going home, bent to the left. <laughs> yeah, if someone wants to do it, someone wants to do it. Um, can I see what kind of armor Corby is wearing? Yeah, he's wearing studded leather. 
Right, just to be safe, because there's some rough looking folk approaching. Um Sorry, how many is there in total? Five. Oh. And Corby. I've accidentally put a bandit from downstairs who wasn't supposed to be there. One, two, three. Oh wait, well, fucking one, two, th one, two, three, four. Nope, no, he was meant to be there. I was counting Tarina because I'm an idiot. So, Corby, you have Shield of Faith up. Do you watch as the man is approaching closer? Yeah, uh, I look at him. I look at him and go, "You're not from here." Um, Captain of the Flaming Fist wants to talk to her. He's on his way. Give me deception. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Six, I, yeah, I'm rolling. I'm rolling flat here. Don't worry, we're both rolling flat. Oh yeah. Oh. As he looks. Uh. Well, has he run? Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I guess no problem. No problem. No problem. What's the problem? Looks back. We only want to talk to. Him. I swear. Sorry, not to interrupt you, but didn't I sense that there was undead? Are these pirates undead? No. Um, at the bottom of the stairs, there was a ghostly elven woman, practically transparent, that you walk, you did see yeah. before this guy kicked in the door. And, and they busted in after the the girl singing. Yeah. Yeah, I right, gotcha. How do you do insight checks? Do you want it? Uh, I am more than happy. No, I, I'm happy for the insight checks to be public. Yeah, I'll just see if he's a. Uh, he's telling the truth. He seems to be telling the truth. Well, in that case, you're more than welcome to go and talk to her at the Flaming Fist headquarters. That's where Captain Zodge wants to talk to her. Oh. If you give me your name, I can leave it at the door so that you can be put on the waiting list. He takes a step forward and closer to yourself. Zodji and I don't get along. Well, whatever you've been up to with Zodj, none of my business. But that's where you're likely to find her when he's finished with her. He watches he pulls out his scimitar. I guess we've got to finish with our first lads. Roll Ah, uh, lovely. Come in. Right. You see, well, I got to remember who actually is a bad guy and who isn't. <laughs> I think everyone this... on the right, except for those two women, are bad guys. I think. I'm a take. All the people who are not in combat. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make them invisible. So, uh, this combat says it will be easy. Eh, combat usually lies to me. So yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Let's see. So, I've got Or Rupert Corby, Jacken, the last one I'm missing is Farcible. Oh. Uh, Great. Do you need to know how to roll again? Me? Uh, for initiative? Yes. I can roll for initiative. That's great. Just uh, slide to 20, right? Or with my, with my initiative bonus. I'm pretty sure if you open up your sheet and just click INI, um, it should automatically roll you into the initiative order. So I will say Sick. for yourself there, Gark, you did throw up a shield of faith, which is 10 rounds, one minute. So I will give it... I'll give it six rounds left, okay? Okay. I see. Hold on. I'll get you in. Don't worry. I don't know if I have roll of her initiative. There we go. Got you in. Uh, you got yourself a sixteen point fourteen. Currently putting your second at the top. 
I'll then roll all the NPCs and realise just how much fucking trouble that these NPCs are in. I'll get some nice combat music. Tom? Awesome, that's quite that's quite uh, some name. Can... What's quite some name? I've just seen the spelling finally of Percival. Huh? Percival. Yeah. That's how you spell it. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's all you said. Um. Let's. Oh boy, Rupert gets to pull out his war crime spells. War crime machine. There are combatants not rolled in. Jacken, of course. <laughs> Jacken at the top of the initiative order. Yep, I meant to turn that off. That's on me. That scared the shit out of me. Uh, so, Q, I'll now need to share my screen so that way you have an idea yes. as to what's going on there, mate. Yeah, no problem. So, here Hello. we are. Yep, can you see? Uh, am I first? Yes. Okay, I got you. Does he even know what's going on? Yeah, no idea. Share my screen for him so that way you can at least see what's going on. Uh, so the timer won't be on for you. Um, I want to attack the closest pirate to me on the left. Your closest pirate. Um, so you can get between 20, you can get what, fucking... See that one on the top? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I go there. Cool, you get there, you run up. Uh, you got your sheet in D&D Beyond? Yeah, so I just want to slash him with the long sword. Alright. Then, uh, I will smack him with the long sword for you. I'll make this yeah. a public roll as well, just so that way there's no bullshitting going on there. Uh, no 18 for 10, uh, I'm pretty sure that fucking hits. I'm... Oh, he's dead. He's gonna run in and just slash, cut down. Really? Oh, he ain't dead quite yet. He's gonna run in, cut down him, and straight through. Is he immediately. You look at his eyes, they're shocked. He's. That's been a big hit, and he was not expecting that from such a scrawny looking guy. Is there anything else you wish to do with your turn? I think you'd be like. You've got no movement left. No, that's my turn. That's my turn. Right. Then. Or or Gark. Uh, gotta be. Uh, do we kill? I have no preference. Well, I asked Corby, but, uh, I, okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't see. I okay. thought you were just asking us in general. <laughs> he's a bit, he's a bit preoccupied. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have my blessing, mate. Uh, I like to cast this. Word of Radiance upon who? Uh, oh, it's all of them, isn't it? Yeah, it's a five foot spear. That's fucking all of them. So I need to do three con saves. Going a little second there. Um, three con saves back to back. So we'll go counterclock. How about a second clockwise? Uh, that's a fail. That's a pass. That's a fail. So uh, fail, fail, and just nothing bad happens on a pass. Uh, no. Okay. And then, uh, as a bonus action, yep. uh, I'll uh, do a Hail Mary. Mine oh, God will bless me. Uh, cast this on myself. Okay. That's not a fucking. Really, that's not a concentration spell. Nope. Damn. Alright, he's gonna burst out the radiance, then give it, you know, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee, blessed out there amongst women, and all that jazz, and. Get covered in a nice little holy aura. Are you doing it now for your turn? Uh, no, but hopefully that pulls aggro. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. First of all. All right. So, does the guy that we right next to us have a name? Do we know what his name is at all? Hasn't is given it. It's called the dude with the eye. Hasn't quite given it. Um. I suppose much will give you there. Well, I mean. He's right up in everyone's business, so I'm just gonna throw a dissonant whispers out there right away. Ah, a classic. Okay, right. there we go. You kind of lean in and give him the good old, you know, your mother's a hamster, and he absolutely <laughs> fails. He's gonna looks at you, tear in his eye. How do you know? 
and he takes 2d6 psychic damage, uses his reaction to move as far away as possible, so he uses his 30 foot of movement to get the fuck away from you. Um, Did I trigger opportunity? No, opportunity attack needs to be willing, uh, that's not a willing movement. Ah. Uh, then that creature in kit, so doesn't move into obviously dangerous ground. Uh, oh, Jackin is obviously dangerous, but it's too late now. Do it now, so it's your turn. Um, uh, let me see. I think I'll just sort of like make sure I just I'm just keeping a, an eye around. I'm sort of not really guarding, um. Tarina, but like just sort of like guarding myself who just happens to be near her yep. and also she promised me information so we yeah. so take this guard here we'll look at or has to make a wisdom saving throw before he can go ahead and attack so he runs up this way uh, he, he could do either or can I uh, do something yeah you need to can yeah. I try and uh, grab him? Because you can of grapple course. instead of an attack. Uh, are you fucking... Are you... Ah, oh, mate, don't worry. It's a uh, straight strength for me. That's that's 19, however. <laughs> I've got slippery fingers. <laughs> I'm sweating a little. <laughs> He's gonna runs up, whipping the scimitar, and rips it up towards Rupert. 16 misses, correct me if I'm wrong. Fifa, 16 hits. The fuck, you're an artificer. Uh, 16 for 2. So, don't worry. Well, they're attacking me. Uh, yep. I would like to use my reaction, then. Of course. Shield. I'll give you two hit points back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Is it, like, you just see his hands, like, shake and the, go the mechanism sort of just fling up to block the hit. This next one runs all the way up to behind yourself. First of all, as it does, takes its scimitar and just tries to ram it through the chair into the back of Tarina. As it does, you hear that. <laughs> you watch as she lunges forward, gasping. She has been, as the road men say, shift. Rupert. Alright, how bad is Tarina looking? Uh, that was pretty, a pretty healthy hit. Um, There's a lot of blood. Not vital, but she could bleed out. Alright, well... Uh, let's see, if I, if I move one space, it doesn't trigger. So... Hmm. I'm not in an angle where I can really attack over... So that... Yeah! You know <laughs> I've been waiting to try this! He pulls out, like, this weird glass jar thing, points it at the captain, and a bolt of fire just flings out. Does a 13 hit the captain? Good question. Uh, does not, know. Ah, but I guess it just spitters out into the stone wall past him. <laughs> ah, bloody calibration. Did I announce your Let's turn? See. Uh, I think that is my turn. Okay. Corby. The chaos um, around. I pull out my sword and I... Trying to stab the guy next to me. A 15 for 4 will hit. Do you give him the good old stabby stab? Am I able to put, put my dagger in my bone in my left hand and do a bonus action or not? Yeah, it's a light and finesse weapon, so you can. Um, so the damage there is a you? two. Yeah. Two is two. And two is better than nothing, is you kinda Stab with that and immediately come in to try and plug him on the other side with that one. Both hit and he is not looking good. Do you wish you'd do anything else, Um No, I'll stay there. Alright. Tarina, not very happy with the shit that she's just been dealt, will immediately kind of pull her sword and turn around and try to stab the guy who just stabbed her. 14 for 7 does in fact hit as the bandit there takes a Healthy, healthy hit. We move over to the captain, just double check this in the whispers. Um, you're moving it always down again, the bottom of Um, so yeah, uh, he can move back if he wishes. Uh, instead, what will he do? Will he move back or will he be brave? I'm sorry, what? Okay, right. 
Nice. You watch as he kind of opens up his jacket and as he does there is a row of daggers as he kind of pulls two out and throws them forward. First towards Percival, uh, Percival. Grab you set one towards Percival, second one towards Corby. Percival, Corby, uh, Percival 23, Corby 18. Yeah, hit. Okay, so, uh, Percival is 23 for 6, Corby is 18 for 7. Move over to this bandit here. Not very happy with what Jacken has done. We'll immediately whip up the sword. 20 for 3 as he slashes up, ripping part of the armour, but. Flesh wound. Ah, this one here next to Orr. He will kind of take a step back. I'm going to take a 15 foot step back and kind of pull out his light crossbow, and as he does, well, and fire 10 for 2 will miss. We'll move back up top of the round. Jacken. Yeah, hello, can you, like, uh, I slashed the uh, pirate next to me. Yeah. Uh, Don't want one. A nine for seven will miss. Will miss? Um, well, I'm going to use the rest of my movement to, like, I'll take, you know, I was moving close to <laughs> the rest of the pirates risking being hit. Uh, like moving towards uh, Barstool, yeah, yes, right yeah, there? Yeah, the, okay. right there, yeah. Gonna move in, uh, taking a page from there, it will go ahead and try to grab you to hold you back. Uh, that there is 13, and then that there can be a, what one is better for you, technically athletics is better for you, you will try bus 3, 13 for 12, you don't move, you stay cuddled. He holds you back, oh. and he is like, mm, I take you to bed later on, big boy, don't you worry. A tender embrace. <laughs> oh my. Or. Okay, um, so. Yeah, I was wondering, is the captain running away? I kind of missed out on uh, that. Dissonant Whispers has to use his reaction to move as far away from the person that cast it as possible. So, he's been oh, forced over right. there. In that case... Uh, you're in a good tip, boy. <clears throat> oh well. Sir. And I'll... Uh, I'll touch him gently. Oh no, actually, I'll, I'll try and grapple him, sorry. And touch him gently. Inflict wounds at 9th level. Are you fucking... <laughs> and you kind of go to hold him in. That's a nat 20. Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. First of all. Alright. Um, I'm just gonna keep going after the captain, and I'm gonna cast Toll the Dead. Oh, I love that one. Bing. Everyone can hear that burn. You watch as he shakes, and as he does, uh, meets it, beats it. Gonna shakes off, gives you a little look, and just to open up and haunt you with a selection of daggers that all look the same. Mm -hmm. Anything else with your turn? Um. No. Okay. We move on over to the bandit here, who will go ahead and... Oh, what will he do? Uh, <laughs> he will walk on round towards to get towards Torino, which does technically invoke three, count it, three opportunity of attacks. Oh, How about that one oh, there? Have... From Corby's again. Yeah, I need... Pulls right. out from you and you watch as... Just he pulls out immediately, mm, uh, collapses. Don't know why it didn't add the token effect. This man is dead. Oh, I was, gonna, I was about to say my dagger and hand axe are in my inventory. Corby. Yeah, I, got hit. I got hit anyway. Dead, yeah, the hit was for an 18. Uh, Corby had a 16. I wrote it down. Uh, this one here, we'll you know, take a look at Farcival and, you know, weigh up his options carefully. And, pardon me. We'll slash at Farcival. That's 21 for 5. It comes in and down your back. Uh, ooh. 
Okay. Rupert, you're up. Uh, I'm. I. I was. I, I need to have a dagger added really quick because I was going to make an attack with that, and I'm missing the dagger. Oh, you should have a dagger. I apologize. Let me get that sorted for you just now, there, sir. I also need a hand axe, but I really just need the dagger at this moment in time. Thank you, and let's abracadabra this bandit right next to me. There you go. Treat him like the match that he nothing. is. I cast shank um, body as he just <laughs> decides. All right, the fire jar didn't work. All right, into the liver. He's gonna bring it in and just oui, right into him. Um, I don't know why that didn't remove four hit points from him. Give him a little second, and I will. Just as I stab him. Did you know I know where every organ in your body is? No. <laughs> Did anything else your turn? Yes, that's it. Yeah. Torby, you're up. Looking quite bad. These bandits are tactically positioning themselves. I'm going to dart yeah. out to there and strike at the bandit fighting yeah. Jacken. A 12 just hits. He's going to bring in the long sword and give him the business end of it. That, uh, that should also be... There we go. And then move up to here and use my dagger on the second bandit. Of course. Just as bonus action, so Six. just a one if it hits. It misses. Okay. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, still give it a slash come in, but you know, maybe it's your pirouette. Maybe you're not as good as you thought you were. So I meant to ask you, didn't else your turn? Yeah, that's it. That digging's gonna go on my fucking tits real quick. You watch it kind of Tarina stands up, you know, moves the chair back, takes her scimitar once more and takes a slash up at this guy here. 14 for two. Wow. But it's better than nothing. The captain. Captain Captain. He's gonna walk on up. He does. He's gonna take his dagger. Stab. Can I do a reaction since he came into my range? No. No. No, it doesn't work like that. I think you're thinking your sentinel feet, correct? Yeah, but I don't think it doesn't matter. If he's attacking someone else, it goes off, but if he attacks me. It's if he moves to within if he moves into your rate your range. Or moves out of your opportunity of attack range, I'm pretty sure. Or if he attacks someone else that isn't me and he's in my range. As well. If he attacks an ally. Say for example he attacks someone that isn't me right now. You hit a creature with an opportunity attack, creatures provoke opportunity attack from you even if they take a disengage action before they leave your reach. When a creature within five feet of you makes an attack uh, to a creature other than you and the target doesn't have this feat, you can use your reaction to make a melee. Right, so he's making a melee attack against you. That's the thing. Alright, okay. Gotcha. He's gonna comes in and gives you the business end of a dagger with a 15. I thought it was a 15 the last time, sorry, I do apologise. There's me taking too many liberties. A 15 will miss. And will immediately take one more dagger at disadvantage because so close to you and throw it towards Farcival. That's a 14 which just hits. As it does Farcival, the dagger hits into you square in the chest and as it does you just down to the ground. As he looks. <laughs> One bandit here looking at you, or is it? Ah, ah, and just panics and screams. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, firstly, great comment. Secondly, nat 20 for 12 total damage as he runs the scimitar across your waistline. With wild disabandon. Did he, did he make the wisdom save? He did not, no, I do apologise, that's on me. I'll make that and then fix my actions accordingly. 12, your DC is... 13? 12. Mate, uh, okay. And I'm happy to roll it back and take, take another hit if you want. Sorry? I'm happy to roll it back, give me the health, and then hit you again after the save. Because I fucked up in that one. Hey, if you are free, mate... You know, I fuck, want to die. I fucked up, so I, I will happily say, I will put my hands up say I fucked up. He passed the save, he'll make another slash upon you to be safe, and that's a nine. 
Jesus fucking Christ. Jack, yeah, it's scaring the shit out of me. Every Don't worry. Jack, I'm going to turn it off on my end right now. I'm just going to slash at the captain beside me. You will make a swiggity swig 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 slash. Uh, long sword slash. That's another nat 20. Nice. Oh, oh baby, a cripple as you... So I will also post that there. You come in, give him the business end of a long sword. He screams. Didn't it ask your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Alright. Forgot how longly boring this can be sometimes. Gork, you're up. Gark, you're up. Oh shit, I was muted. Um, I have had quite enough of this. Um, I will cast uh, my personal spell um, called Bludgeon. Ah, that's a fucking classic spell. Oh, I can turn these off. Thank the gods. As you bring up the sword, the mace, bring it down on this guy's head. A oh, big. He's going home with a black eye if he survives, that's for certain. And definitely a migraine. Did anyone else your turn? A fucking mace? Uh, uh, no. Um, it's bludgeoning. I'll keep standing in front of him. It's bludgeoning, not piercing. First of all, I need you to do me a favour. Yeah. You're on death saves. I need you to set your chat to private GM roll. I then need you to just roll flat in the chat slash R1D20. So that's 120. Wait, I did it wrong. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a really good death save. Yeah, that's I mean, that's, crazy. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's a nat 120. <laughs> it was. Wait, so what's the command? Sorry, what? Slash R 1D 20. Okay. okay. And then we move swiftly on to... El Bandito. I hope no one else is hearing the noises now that I deleted all that shit. Okay. Well, it will take its scimitar once more and take a slash into your gal Tarina as he pierces in. Tarina takes a whole three damage. She's not very happy. Ripper! Free patient lying on the fro the floor? The floor. Um, another cadaver lying on Two cadavers lying on the floor. Um, the operating you know, table yeah, I'm, I'm willing to take opportunity for this because his urge to practice <laughs> debatably legal medicine is strong. I took a fucking oath. <laughs> so, is this guy going to make an opportunity on me? Nah. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. Alright then. Uh, oh, I've been waiting to test this! As he put, pulls out this modified syringe that just expels a bit of gel onto some of um, Percival's wounds, and I cast Spare the Dying. <laughs> Your wounds? No, no, no. This works. <laughs> spare so the Dying. Pass that on, and you watch as Percival's breathing seems to shallow out. You can watch as they don't seem to be as distressed as they were moments prior. All right, I'll get to you in a, in a second. Anyways. Time for medical malpractice as he approaches this bandit. That's my turn. Okay. Corby, speaking of malpractice. <laughs> uh, I'm going to try and drive my sword into his, the bandits. 21 for 5. Does is you're going to bring it in right in there. You watch as he starts to gargle on his blood. Four is he still up? Oh, he's gone. Down. Um, so as he's falling, I'd like to try and like jump on his back and then I'll come to the table. And run along the table and stick my dagger into the one that was next to. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'd say you could that with with ease, as there's plenty of room there. There's even some spare chairs. We don't need to check on there. And then try and drive my dagger into this bandit's. Yeah. Right. Points for style, and that's about it. Is you gonna stab it and jump across the table, pull out the dagger, and go for it, and just. Nothing but air the entire time. <laughs> but it looks cool, that's and that's what's visual. important. <laughs> yeah. Imagine this itty bitty bird coming for your eye. <laughs> Did anyone else your turn there, my guy? No, that's my turn. Three hours. Oh. 
you, you watch, she's gonna goes into her jacket and gonna pulls out a little crossbow. You mail guy, fire. That's a fucking five. Don't know why I bother. <laughs> the arrow goes through and he oh, once more opens up his jacket, pulls out two more of his little thrown knives. There was one towards Tarina and the second one towards Corby, both at disadvantage because we have a friendly right there. Tarina 16 for 6. Tarina goes down. You watch as she is gargling away like an absolute madman. Corby 19 for 7, avoiding a nat 20. Does my sentinel feature make me better? Melee attacks. These oh, are ranged. Yeah, it's fine. See, it was a dagger. Was it was you and you on the table, power sliding just on your back. We have a bandit somewhere. There we go. Bandit in front of yourself, or he's got to make his low whiz savy throw. That's a three. He will run up gonna sit on one of the chairs up towards the table gonna almost try and do a corby to power slide into Torino with his little dagger in hand wait sorry i was muted uh the uh sanctuary dropped because i made an attack that's that's okay corby's down oh shit no, the bandit uh... that's on me apologies uh i don't know how i mistook shield of faith for it that's on me yeah, both are dropped now. Yep. Uh, well, in that case, then. Uh, Shwing, you did a Shwang, Wang, Wang. That's uh, a 19 for 6. So he's not holding the crossbow anymore, right? I gather that he was holding before. Did he attack you with a crossbow? Yeah. Dit, 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 dagger. Scimitar. Crossbow, ground. Uh, Jacken. Yeah, I'm just going to slash. The boy beside me again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That is a 13 for 10, which just misses. Okay. Just um, I'm... Who, who's, who's down at the moment? Who's on their glass? Uh, first of all is down but stable. Corby is down. Um, oh, Corby's down. Is there anything I could do to get them back up using healing hands or... Um, boom, 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 boom. you do not have any spells at this moment. You don't get spells until second level. Not even healing hands. I thought that was a class. You got you got to move over there to do that. Um, yeah, but will that get will that get them up? That would get them up. Yes. So if, like, he's, if he's attacked this turn, yeah, it's an action. It's an That's action. the only thing. So, but I can still use my movement just to get over there right now. Yeah, I do so. Yeah, I, I risk the thing now. Move over as he's still standing there with his throwing knives in hand. You don't know, your turn? That's my turn. Okay, I'm just writing up my table. Or Uh, I do want to say that Colby still has a shield of faith currently. Uh, there you go. Pommel's okay. heading. Uh, the hit to Corby was a 19, however. No, yeah, okay, but once he gets up again. Ah, okay, no worries. you. Pull out your little mace and bink bank bonk this guy right in the head as you watch. He just kind of caves his skull. He drops to the ground, head bent in like that one meme. Mm. I, don't, I don't know what meme is talking about, right? It's alright, I'll, I'll send, just look in the mirror. Uh, and I'll uh, jump up on the table, point towards this dude. This table's getting a lot of action tonight. First of all, who it is currently <laughs> down but not out, Rupert. I'm just gonna politely step in front and say, "All right, now I'll get you up." As I just pull back my gloves a little and just, I'll show those paladins what for. All right, healing hands uh, slash roll two d four on uh, Torsible. Tor 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 you take seven healing as the darkness that did encompass you seems to pass on through as you awake here in the room. The sounds of battle coming through. Yeah. At the end, you get a gentle slap on the face to, and you hear him say, WAKE UP! WAKE UP! I rise slowly and just sort of stare. I apologize for the inconvenience. Did I'll announce... put it on your medical bill. Did I announce your turn there, okay? 
That's it. Sorry, but that's all I got. Corby, privately GM, 1d20 roll, please, sir. Q, Q, Q. We move then straight over to Tarina, who uh, at this point here technically has to make her own death saving throws because uh, I knocked her unconscious. Ooh, I like that. And then we move over to this bandit captain who sees what's going on. Well, take a few more steps backwards. At this point here, I believe he is also at the range where, yeah, all of these attacks. Now, regardless of what happens, uh, this, see, you know, looks, opens up his second side. You see a lot more knives and a lot less pockets. He'll throw his first towards Rupert. Worry. Infraction that it was. How dare you. And the second towards Or. Is Or actually within 60 foot? I need to ask myself. Just. We'll take Dos and Dos. So, uh, Rupert number one. That is a seven. That is a miss. And our boy Or Or. That is a 15. That there is also a miss. He's going to stand there uh, eyeing up the stairs. I yeah? Got a question, mate. Of uh, this guy in front of me, is he dead? Or does he just not want to fight? He's not in the initiative, as far as I know. Yeah, He's that's what I said. somehow not in the initiative order anymore? That's poggers, mate. That's absolutely fucking nice. He's, he's just been sitting down, hoping no one notices him. That's what it is. It's a, it's a really oh, yeah. bad stealth check. <laughs> I fucking we should leave him be. We should leave him be. <laughs> I'm kidding. He's that one guy that doesn't want to be here, and he's just taking it. like, yeah, fuck it. Can I use my action to... Oh, well, whatever. Is it? Uh, Jackin. Yeah, I want to use my action to heal. Healing hands on Corby. Uh, you, you have five. You have all, all five points. All of it. Yep. All of it. You're gonna place your hands on the Kenku Corby the Darkness that was enveloping you. you just <gasps> come back to laying on this table, looking up at the chandelier, cards and blood around. Do you else your turn, Jacken? That's that ends my turn. I think I, I don't think I can do anything else anyway. Okay. Yes. Oh no. Uh, would it be an action to make a charisma check? No, no, no. I'll give you it for free. Alright, uh, first of all, I'm, uh, gonna touch my forehead to look at this bandit. Uh, say, uh, mate, you better fucking surrender. You're, uh, you're pretty surrounded and, uh, your mates are dead. If you, uh, go willingly, alright, uh, I'll protect you. And I will, I guess, persuasion? Roll whichever, roll whichever one's appropriate for it, for what you actually wish to do. A four. Are you fucking roll a five two times in a row. Thank you, mate. That's lovely. Thank you for fucking reminding me. Oh, great. Yeah, I got a five. Wow. What do you do? Is he kind of looks at you? You did this to me. I just. I can't believe you. Did anything else for your turn? Uh, I'd like to uh, get off the table, sit next to him, and uh, just kind of put my hand on his shoulder. <laughs> and nod. This is Matthias all over again. As you do, the chair you're on seems to get a little bit wetter. Do you know so? First of all. What? Is he coming? <laughs> Having practically risen from the grave, I turn and stare at the captain once more with a bit of a, for the first time, maybe a bit more emotion than I've shown before with a bit of a glare, and I'll cast Eldritch Blast. Uh, you still sitting down? Lying down? Uh, I think I got, I got up when I was healed, I believe. Yep. Okay, so, uh, on you go. Rock it. Boom, fill three. Oh, yeah, you're going to watch as his beard blows away and his cheeks seem to flap a little bit. Almost like he's on a roller coaster. Did it answer your turn? Um, uh, not much else I really can do in this position. I guess I'll just sort of stay near the group. Okay. We roll over to Ripper. That healing will cost you five silver. Anyways, oh, oh, I'm out of my movement thing. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're brave. No, I'm considering <laughs> my options. Is, you know so is Tarina, is, is Tarina dead or is she still? She's unconscious. Um, I have her making death sickness for us. Okay. Oh, look at you, hard man. All right. 
Uh, I have one spell slot left, so hopefully she'll can save me. I cast knife. <laughs> She's gonna walk up and just. Eh. An 18 for hey, two will hit. Actually, as I cut out, I'm just gonna say, did you know that? Um, man, I can't think of a witty doctor thing. Ah, man, that knife really took it out of me. Anyway, that's the end of my turn. Corby, awake, lying on the table, staring at the ceiling. It's a very nice ceiling. I groan and I'd like to stand up and take one step to the knoll. And then I'll put out my bow. Mm -hmm. I'll aim at the captain who, I assume it's his dagger who killed me, and I'll pull an arrow and shoot at him. 20 for 3, as you do. Uh, as I do a large, or, or a loud, sorry, um, like crow core uh, rings out, so I mark it. It's an additional one damage on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gonna look some, rips the arrow out. He is not looking good. He has seen better days and, well, none of them are in the Elksong Tavern, clearly. Did it now your turn? <laughs> That's my turn. Okay, and then I'll really quickly just do that. KK, okay, okay. and we move over to the bandit captain really quickly there. So he watches Tarina's breathing is laboured. The captain will look at yourself, Rupert, and as he does, takes his dagger out. You shouldn't have done that. And just stabbed and Completely misses, you know that that one eye. It fucks with <laughs> everything. She does. Did you then... know your depth precision is off if you're missing an eye. See, eyes you up and down, and just puts his hand out to grab you by the neck. Uh, could I have an anti grapple check, please, sir? Whichever is more beneficial to yourself. <laughs> it's athletics or acrobatics, right? Uh top of my head, I believe so, but could be wrong. I have a whole sheet. You are grappled. He kind of grabs you by the scruff of the neck, kind of turns round, dagger in hand. We are. We got to call it even then, lads. Jacking. Right, so he has the, the guy over there and like, as a hostage? Yes. Just kill like, him! Is this like a proper hostage situation, or is it like he's just got to take a few damage? Is he? Is his life in danger? This man has technically remember? knocked out two of your colleagues in the past almost minute. So how much damage? How much damage have I taken? Uh, you yourself? You actually? You, you haven't taken much. Um, you, you're still got three quarters left in the tank. Um. Yeah, I want to finish off this pirate below me. No, <laughs> he's, he's sort of surrendered at the moment. You were oh, next yeah. to me when I said I'll spare your life, then. Yeah, he's, he's sort of surrendered. Sitting oh, in a right, puddle right. of his own piss. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> the, 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 the leader's surrendering to us, basically calling it evens. No, no, <laughs> the guy believed you surrendered. The leader oh, so has. Uh... <laughs> right. <laughs> right, sorry. Um, you know, I'm going to use all my movement to make my way towards the captain. 35 will get you behind Rupert. You'd have to dash to get dash. to the... Yeah, you'll get your dash get to the captain. I dash to get to the captain, that's, and that's all I can really do, is it? Uh, you can join us. Yeah, you, you, you don't have a dagger or anything, so you can't make an offhand attack. And your offhand's all filled, so yeah. Well, yeah, so hit my... Yeah, that's all I could do. Yep. Horror. Uh, got a question. Uh, do I get disadvantage on a range attack or either from the dude sitting next to me or uh, two creatures standing in front of the cat? I believe the creature standing next to you has to be hostile. Um, this yes. this guy's very much uh, scared of you, so you know, he, he, he ain't very hostile. Alright, and do Rupert <laughs> and Jacques in, uh, impose disadvantage because they're in the way? Nah, from, from where I see right now, you have like the perfect line of sight right to here, which would be non-disadvantage. 
All right, in that case, I will uh, very calmly put my holy symbol on the table, uh, nod to, um, I'll, I'll call him uh, Jacqueline, right next to me. <laughs> uh, say, don't worry, uh, pull out this tiny little fucking dinky thing. <laughs> As you pull it out and, you know, whip out the gat as Katiri had. Katiki had, rather. He's fire and you watch it gets him right there and it is a devastating hit with extremely precise accuracy. Is it, uh, you know, Rupert, you can tell he's hit something vital. Not vital enough to fuck him up, but, you know, enough to do some damage. Did it answer your turn? Uh, no, I'll just say smoke him. <laughs> uh, give me a perception check real quick whilst we're at it there, Kirk. Sure, mate. What holy symbol? Parsable. Alright. Uh, I assume that anything I do from afar besides Toll the Dead would hit uh, Rupert, right? Like, if I cast it, I'll just splash it would, like, nah. hit him first. Nah? Alright. Rupert does not class um, as cover. He's not an object, he's a person. Stop objectifying Rupert. Okay. All <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I mean, hell, I'll cast Toll the Dead again. Arguably better damage. You see, bell tolls for thee, everyone hears the ding as he kind of looks. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. It does not seem to have it, any effect. Effect. Yeah, Corby? Is it, it just the, the uninjured version. Uh, it, it literally... Doesn't matter. Yeah. I, I'd have rolled the damage for it anywhere. So I have just noticed uh, and I will add in that to the spell for you to snow. Uh, we will go ahead and do it. Else, your turn, rather first and foremost. Um, I think I'll just stay where I am. I think. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know why it classes that as versatile damage. It ain't fucking versatile. Um, injured, injured. Sorry, dun, 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 dun. and then smash over necrotic. Could you do me a? Yeah, there we go. Could you do me a favor and smash me another pull the dead real quick? Nice. There we go. It's done it now. Sometimes pull the dead can be like that. Ripper, man, holding you by the neck, little dagger to your throat, your friend. Standing, you're uh, some guy, you know, standing right next to you. You really chose a poor value target, my god, my good man. Uh, real quick, it's a bonus action to make an offhand attack, right? Yeah, um, for your case, and hind axes are light, I believe, right? Light and versatile, yeah, so we would just remove your uh, ability modifier from the damage if you hit. Okay. So, uh, one from the dagger, as I sort of, like, stab behind me. Eleven will miss. So, Alright, and then let's try an offhand, uh, it's called a hand axe, but it's just a surgical saw now. <laughs> and it misses, like, ha, 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 <laughs> And, uh, let's see, do I have anything, let's see, no, I didn't prepare any bonus action spells, yep, I am boned. <laughs> Corby. Um, suddenly seeing that uh, person we're after, Tar Tariel, is down. Can I go and try and check her out, see if she's completely dead, if I can do something to bandage wounds, save her? Yeah, I'd say, um, if you take a look, her breathing is very much laboured. She's alive, but on the cusp. Can I do something to try and help stabilize her, fix her up? Uh, standard medicine check for stabilization. Oh, it's a maybe it's the heat of combat, maybe it's the fact you're not very prone to doing it, but you're gonna pat round, you know. Anyone with any skill can tell that you're trying, but you're just not quite there. Did anyone else your turn? No, I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, gal, Tarina. You watch as she is breathing and breathing. She watches the blood pouring is pulling higher and higher. 
as it does. The guard captain here, or when I say guard, bandit cap, the pirate, you know, moves back five feet as he does. Let me walk and I'll let him go. Simple trade, right? Looks round everyone. All right, force my hand. He watches, he takes a little dagger and pushes it in towards Rupert's throat. You watch the guy just cuts right in the under chin area. What did What did he roll to hit? Eighteen. Shield. He kind of does that and he shing. <sighs> As he sort of plays up his hand. <laughs> Can I use a reaction to attack him? Yeah. I do so. Um, and is there anything special about that? Yeah. His, move, his movement goes to zero, I think. That's only for opportunity. Um, oh, okay. Yep, so it's just a standard ass attack. As you go ahead, you give him the Wata. That's in that one, mate. Oh my god, I don't know. See, takes that down and runs a. Uh, and tries to push it in your chest. That is a seven. That is a fail. See. My AC is 20 till it's my <laughs> turn again. <laughs> Starts to pull away with Rupert down the stairs. Jacken. Um, I move behind. I move behind them on the stairs. You get to here? Yeah, yeah there. And I slash with my sword. You bring it down 23 for 3. What's up with the low damage rolls tonight? As you Ooh. slash on in and down. He's still holding Rupert there. He looks. Um... She's if dead. he moves away from me, if he moves away from me, does he still provoke opportunity attack? Uh, he would now. Yeah, gotcha. Did anything else you done? That's it. But all. Alright, uh, sure they got that covered. Oh, here you go, mate. I, uh, uh, punch uh, Tarina's head, I guess. See, big, meaty sausage fingers all round. Both of you's, uh, human anatomy is a weird and wonderful thing that you seem to struggle with right now. <laughs> First of all. Um. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. That's wonderful. Um. Can I use my movement action to... How how long? How far can I go? You can go 30 foot. So anywhere in the green line. So I'll just make my way across to here. Yep. Did you hobble your um, way over? Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. That's all you're doing? Oh, yeah, I thought I picked up. I said, yeah, that's all I'm gonna do. Okay. Rupert, still held in this big man's arms. You can smell the fact that he probably hasn't washed in about a week. This oh. month. Don't you know bathing's essential for health? Oh. Dab. 17 Slash. will hit. He's gonna stick that into his leg. Did I know she's done? Uh, off hit. Oh, wait, hold on. It's not. Uh, roll it normal because it's only the damage. It's you, not letting me roll the hand axe. I can roll the dagger again. I'm pretty sure they're the same damage die. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and that's a d6. Yeah, so we can uh, roll. Right. Uh, so uh, minus. Uh, two. Well, that's the thing. Um, that there is oh, yeah, it's a max damage, so we would we, we would just say a six for the safety of it. Well, you roll a six to hit. Yep, so gonna... it doesn't hit anyway. Oh wait, no, you're, man, I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> I've seen six damage. You're gonna stab it and try with your hand. That's hit the wall behind. Do it now. Your turn. Yep, that's it. Gorby, this man is descending down a flight of stairs at a rather slow speed, but he's got... He's got a guy. Take it or leave it. If you're free me, I can heal the woman! I'm not at all. I don't know what to do. Try and save her. 
And I'm just going to try and move. And then with my bow, take a shot at him. Yep. 15 for 7 just hits. He's going to fire through and watch the arrow ends. The mark. Plus 2 for the damage. The mark flies again. He watches the blood that is pouring down. How much health does this man have? <laughs> Let's be honest, the fact that he's holding you and up against the wall is probably the only reason he's still standing on a set of stairs and not falling down them. He looks that bad. I hope you fall down these stairs! Did it announce your turn, Corby? That's my turn. Tarina will. Die. I'm keeping track of my throws, so thank you very much. <laughs> the captain will pull his scimitar and he drops the dagger and grabs the scimitar and as he does will stab Jacques in first and foremost 15 for 8 will miss and then try just once more Bane on his side Thorn stabs that's a nat 20 on Jacques and for a total of 13 as it does Jacques and you <clears throat> and see light just you on the ground as he laughs takes the scimitar and Drags it across Rupert's throat. 19 for 4. That hits because my AC is at 15 now. You will proceed to take another step down the stairs. Jackin, um, oh, you're in D&D &D Beyond. Shit. Yeah. Um, uh. Someone who feels generous, roll a. Someone who's generous and lucky, roll a D20. The doctor can do it. Oh. <laughs> that works too. Mm. I'm sorry, I don't know why I did that, seeing as I've only rolled like twos and fours today. I don't know what made me think, oh yeah, I'll be lucky this time. <laughs> um, can I do a quick glance at the captain, see uh, if he looks like a good shot would kill him? He very much looks like... Very, you know, a fucking dark could kill him. A right, well, really breeze. Uh, I got uh, one order specifically. Uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll slap Tarina across the face. Does she kind of <laughs> comes to you know that ah, still unconscious? You watch as she starts to breathe a lot more consistently. The wind seems to stop bleeding. She is stable. Did it not your turn? All right, love. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll sit next. Uh... To, uh, Why are you taunting me? <laughs> oh, it offends me. Marshall. All right. Uh, I'm gonna basically sort of like, not perch, but sort of like, how how tall is this like banister sort of thing that's blocking from the stairs? It's only waist high. Um, the fall at this point is about human high, six foot, but banister itself you could easily lean over with no issues. All right, can I go over there and shoot the captain with the crossbow? Yeah. All right. Go for the <laughs> other eye! <laughs> kind of leans over the side, gangs the stuff as you do, just watches nice. it. Ends in as it does. He watches, he lets go of Rupert. And you hear the boom, 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 boom. And followed by <laughs> from downstairs as the body just falls. Do anything else with your turn? Don't worry, uh, you just had too much to drink. <laughs> <laughs> I just watch and just just watch him fall down the stairs and just as you deserve. And that's it. Oh. Ripper. Alright. Move over oh, I'm on ruler. Oops. Move you over get, to here. On that ruler, if you just hit space, you will immediately move forth. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, anyways. Alright, this will be one silver on your medical bill, as he casts Spare the Dying with the uh, gel syringe. And she do ask that you stabilize your good. Eh. As that ends there, what's the. That's crunch? really all I can do. Yep. Yeah, you, as we. In that they're all stabilized, some dead, some alive. Let's call that a call.
combat. Oh, and the amazing combat music. And... Uh, go to me. Uh, did what you asked. Good, good. And then, can I go and absolutely ransack her? Search oh. her, strip her. <laughs> take take anything from her. Sure. Uh, as you kind of frisk over, I will say you... I think you set a dice, first and foremost. Um, given your background, you can tell very quickly that this is a nice set of loaded dice. Very much weighted in someone else's favour. A you know, set of marked cards as well, very much a cheater. And 100 gold. Um, am I stabilised? Stabilised, but you're unconscious. Yeah. Um, okay. Someone roll a d4 for what? me, please. Sure. Or, no. You're unconscious for quite some time, mate. Uh, uh, Colby. Well, Colby. Yep. Uh, yeah. Remember when you asked me to uh, 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 get her up and running, you know, stabilise her, right? As you were running away. Yep. Um, I did that. Now, as you're currently my employer, I do request a small little fee. Point of right. fact, I'm not your employer. I'm your, what's the word, middleman. Um, Captain Dodge is your employer. All right, in that case, can I get a donation, mate? <laughs> I, uh, I, I saw that at the corner of my eye. That you picked up uh, a wee bit of uh, volume. Did you? With a I figured. You didn't really hide it. Uh, I didn't have any I mean, rules cheap... for it. Uh, there's a table in the way. Could you have seen that... clearly from where you were? With a pass of a 14 and no slight of hand check, I'd say yes, but I can. Class it, I mean, class half cover. I don't, I'd class half cover. Um, I'd say give me a perception check, Gark. Yes, sir. Wow. Okay. You saw Corby rifling. Um, as for if he found anything, not too sure, but he did give the copy. I say the corpse. He did give Tarina the once over. All right, then, mate. My bad. Uh, I assumed something. Ah, uh, you can still make the donation, mate. Mm-hmm. Given you're the middleman and all, and I did do what you asked, and I did, uh, you know, bless you and all that. Uh, uh. This is true. Um, I'll go and put the cards in his arm- arms box. <laughs> uh, Mark, Gark, you can add a set of marked cards to your inventory if you wish. Well, that's going cards. on. Are they, are they yeah. poker cards? Yeah, it's, it's very much like poker cards, and like certain, you know, on the backs of these cards, there are certain scuff marks that, were you to take the time and learn, you would definitely uh, be able to cheat your way through a gambling situation. Well, that's going on. I'm just gonna casually drag the captain's body back up to loot him. As you just hear the thunk of his head banging against the stairs. Just thunk, thunk, thunk. These are <laughs> now here. And. Oh, the timing is looking good for it. I would say we are just encroaching on three hours. Seems like a good time to first of all say we're probably going to need to take a short rest, if not a long rest, because a certain someone is unconscious mm. for five hours. The one time he rolls a higher number than the <laughs> dice allows. I know, uh, 1d4 plus 1 for unconscious. So, he is a sparkle. Everyone else is awake. The Everyone's going to start slowly coming to and looking around to see what is going on. I'm just looting this poor dead captain. Uh, you find four daggers. That's it? Uh, All of his money if was... We do take, yeah, yeah. If we do take um, some time, uh, Corby will give out 20 gold to everyone in the party and have some for Jacken as well. 
when he wakes up, as that's the new, he, and he's is sharing that out now. Yeah, I'll take um, his daggers. Can I can I uh, shove this in Jacqueline's face? He's currently unconscious, so technically speaking, you can do whatever you want. Just remember that Jacqueline? certain things. Who who made him? No, not Jacques and Jacqueline. Who the fuck is Jacqueline? My, my my bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Looks. What do you want from me? Ah, uh, you got money, mate. <laughs> Is I, it uh, his pocket and pulls it a single solemn coin, shaking his in the box? What kind of coin is it? Single copper piece. Wait, you for the the nation. <laughs> Please let me go. No. You're my bitch now. <laughs> you know, looks, turns, looks the forcible tear in his eye. Do I have a leash on me? <laughs> I just, I just there, look over. The group? Sorry. I just look over at the man and then back at him and just. You are remarkably insane. Oh, quite. Uh, um, yeah. It's mouths. Help me. If you're wanting to keep him a slave, you do know you, there is a fee for that. You have to pay it to register it the slave. What does it cost? Is a slave that's well, illegal. illegal in here? That's illegal! The, the, the last time it was quite expensive. I don't really know as I've never taken a slave. Alright, I'll find a loophole, yeah? You got some rope for me, mate. Sorry. Hello. Hi. Sorry, you don't have rope? No rope. Oh, fuck. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna go get us some rooms. Especially for Mr. Unconscious over here. As I give him a little, like, like I check his pulse and everything. Ah, still, still good. Still good. Just tiptoeing past the captain's body and just heads downstairs. Is he? Uh, bandit takes some of the blood that's on the table and just starts to write that's illegal and blood on the table. <laughs> uh, all jet aside though, uh, I'm gonna get Jacqueline here. Seeing as every bandit is dead, we might need some, uh, you know, evidence. My name's Bob! Sorry? My name's Bob! Who, uh, who gave you permission to speak? <laughs> Mike, you cry what I tell you to cry, alright? Make an intimidation check. Can I very quickly touch myself before I do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. God, right. do, I, do I get intimidation <laughs> advantage or. Uh, uh guidance is 1d4. Um. Dad. <laughs> that shit. <laughs> what is that? Don't forget your d4. Don't forget your d4. Why do I have a roll streak? Why did you add that module? <laughs> That's so I thought, it, I thought it was so funny when people were getting a shit ton of nats. It's in counter statistics. I can tell you all the damage, all the nat 20s, all the nat 1s who've done the most damage. I just think it leads to some great scenarios where someone wants to do something really good and we can see how many times they've rolled poorly. <laughs> I can keep track, mate. I can keep a mental track. It's gonna <laughs> look at you. He kind of turns and just looks and says, you'll you burn. Say? He said that to me? Yeah. What What was this response to? I forgot what I said. <laughs> Sorry. He said, uh, <laughs> you, you can cry when I tell you. You can cry something like that. Oh, okay. Robert, um, you, you rock downstairs as the barkeep works. You, uh, um... Taking care of that. I, I like to think there's just like a bunch of blood on the front of his robes and stuff. Just yes, we're taken care of. I should. There isn't. I don't think there's any damage to your property. Is there blood? I'll buy. I'll buy a bunch. I'll buy some rooms if we don't worry about the blood. You're paying me regardless. Well, yes, but uh, let's just not worry about the blood for now. I would like to buy some rooms for my compatriots. And is there blood? 
How much blood was all over the floor when I just left? Uh, quite a lot. There's, there's a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, there's uh, quite a lot. We'll get one of our friends, aka Garak's new quote unquote friend, to clean it up. Uh, my pet. No. <laughs> this is horrible. How many rooms? We'll get. Uh. How many rooms? Well, there's five of us. Well, I guess six, including the... I have four rooms available. So there'll be some parking. Fine, we'll just put... Sure, we'll just put two in each. How much for uh, four rooms? One gold. Alright, off you pop. Here you go. He's gonna peer up, he's gonna hand you over the keys. I expect it to be and... spotless. Yeah, we'll get so we'll get someone in our party on cleaning. We pull back up, got it. That's gonna be. You pour. Can I um, yeah. to, search the dead pirates, not the captain, but the other yeah, three yeah. or four that were dead. Oh, sorry, Corby, do you got manacles? Oh, oh well, I don't I, have manacles. Where am I? How did I end up out here? Man has managed to hit both ends of the portal at the same time. I got you. Don't worry, pim pim. <laughs> Bye. Ah. Uh, the horn fella, you got manacles, mate. I do not. All right. Oh. Uh, excuse me, uh, David Megan Arby's, uh, whatever name you've tapped on yet. Uh, I'll uh, cut so you a deal. Oh, okay. so, uh, I'll make a sizable donation if you let this man go. Looks what at your is, eyes. Uh, what? And also, if I turn to this bandit. If I let you go, you're cleaning up the blood. Anything. Uh, I got one interjection, mate. Uh, if we let this guy go, we. If we let you go and you turn us into whoever you work for, I will gut you surgically. You just killed who I work for! We oh, need this good. dude for his interrogation, mate. Alright, good. Uh, well, just tell us what you know, clean up the blood, and I'll pay for your release. All I know is that, that she, 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 you know, hurriedly points towards Tarina, she, she owed uh, him some, some, some money, and, you know, um, she's a cheater, a liar, and but he, he wanted his money, and it was, it was like, uh, 50 platinum, so you know. Mm. Alright. Uh, here, I'll give you uh, I'll give you 8 gold if you let him go. Uh, Please, sir, will you I let like... me go? Oh, yeah. I didn't tell you to speak. Uh, I like the sound of uh, 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 10 gold more, mate. Alright, sure. 10 gold and you let him go. But remember, I turned to the bandit, you're cleaning up the blood and then you can go. Alright, mate, you're ready to go. Uh, if I see a single spot of blood, I will chase you. I know what you look All like. Alright, I, I hand him the 10 gold and say, Alright, get to cleaning. And uh, good news, if you want to stay, I've booked uh, rooms for uh, four. You can bunk with me if you wish. Can I whisper in his ear? I've, I've also got a bed for you, mate. And Rupert will leave that offer for the bandit. Like, if he wants to sleep somewhere safe, you can bunk with Rupert. Oi. Uh, I'm safe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm the he's alive. <laughs> and remember, no blood. You watch, he's gonna sprint, <laughs> st sprint, 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 Serena's body to the, the, the sofa or the lounge above her and trying to like get her lying on that. Right. Uh, so. I'll uh, I'll get Jacqueline. <laughs> he's a little. Uh, he's lying here a little uncomfortably. I think. So, I I'll, will uh, see. Can I put him on this couch? Yeah. He's gonna just plop him on the couch and be whoop, 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 whoop. As the band that kind of runs down the stairs hurriedly and then. Few moments later, comes back with like a big pail and like three mops and a little like cloth. 
just starts good. frantically. Like every so often, it looks at you and it starts in another area. That's, uh, that's, oh, a, good, that's a good Bob Chuckaline. Good boy. Uh, Alright, uh, I guess you? which rooms are ours? Uh, wah, wah, wah. Alright, okay. I'm taking this room. Did you walk into a dining room? Uh, oh, this is a dining I'm room. Also, there is a description for you. There is a description for you, Major. Oh, okay. I just need to get the map up for it. That there it is. There, there, there. Boom, boom, bang. As you look into this particular room here, there is the mounted head of a displacer beast upon the eastern wall and a small armoire to inspire this room's name. As you look upon the door, there's a small plaque that says Displacer Beast Room because someone is so fucking original. God, they couldn't have called it like the Displaced Brewery or something? The Displaced Dining Experience? Ah. Oh. As he walks out with disappointment, uh, and as I pass the ba ba or as I walk to a room past the bandit, and remember, you want to bunk with with safety, you can bunk with me. I'm pulling and, an old uh, lighter. I guess I'll. Oh, you're already in that room. Uh, well, I guess we have to bunk anyway. Oh, you can join me, mate. I, nope. There's this uh, from here. Alright, well, I feel yeah. a little uh, bullied. Left out. I'm trying to find the rooms. Uh, they are these rooms over here. One, one. Oh, I thought I was drawing. I'm not. Here. Fucking draw. Here and here. Is my body still just laying there? You're just lying on a couch, mate, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> just like, uh, you know. Looks yeah. like you've had one too many. Yeah. I, I figured because he's. I, I figured because he's, like, bloody that, um,. Bob Jacqueline will clean him up as well. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna so just pick up okay. Jack, Jack and just drag him to my room. <laughs> Is there okay, anything else right. anyone else wishes to be doing? Uh, Jack, yeah, you can I'm... sleep on the floor. <laughs> That's so fucking. Alright. <laughs> I'm half dead sleeping on the floor. Corby? I, I also have a bed. You could put him in my bed. Oh, is he not? Like, did no one take him anywhere? I took I him into my room. I left him on the floor. I left him on the floor. I don't want him getting mugged. I'm, I'm standing that guard bandit... on the Yep. Then. If that bandit steals from us, I'm gonna gut him surgically. I will say, for after about an hour, I mean, it's got called two hours, about two hours, Serena seems to kind of wake up, come to, and. And the whole looks at you there, Corby. We win, right? We won. They did, yeah. God. It's been a pleasure. Oh, sleep it up here and then be gone. Thank you. I think he's gonna watch she places her he like forehead down on the table. You just immediately starts to just drift away once more. If you've left anything out of the information, won't go well for you. Do you listen? Fucking ominous. You can hear, just for the briefest of moment, she holds her breath or exhaling out. Go. During the day, then. Or she immediately starts. With the snoring that could only be akin to that of an owl bear. She watches. Within this time, most of the blood on the laminate and table has been cleared, and he's now down with like a brush just scrubbing away at the carpet and like. Frantically looking round for four in the mornings. <laughs> you wish to do anything else with the rest of your night there, Corby? No, I'll just keep watching till uh, he's done, and then I'll make sure there's no further like murdering or trying to kill him, and then I'll go to bed if we're taking a rest. 
Now, I will say it takes him about four hours to get this done. But eventually, all the blood is cleared. He's been up and down, had numerous buckets. Okay, like, there's been a waiter the whole time by the top of the stairs. Like, mm, <laughs> off limits, off limits. No. He's going to go up and down, cleaned it, and eventually he's going like, to stand in there, sweat running down, still bleeding himself, kind of pack that up with something. He's a... Please don't let the big man find me. Well, he knows where I'm sleeping. <laughs> Runs downstairs with all the stuff, and a few moments later, the barman's head kind of peeks up, looks round, and you hear the, um, the door slamming. The place is actually better looking than it was when you just came in. Hey. Fear is an excellent motivator. Is it work, Corby? I, wherever you sleep is where you sleep. However, Fort, I feel that is a very good place to end tonight's session. And yeah. level two. So level up, long rest. Yes. Yeah.